Hey guys how are you all? Welcome back to my channel. Today we will see what if Naruto and his sister arranged marriage. If you enjoy then please like share and do comments. Even at the tender age of 7 years old when life is just beginning, Naruto Namikaze was forced to mature faster than anyone else his age. The reason why? 7 years ago on the night of his and his twin sister, Kiyomi, birth a man wearing an orange and black masked attack. After their mother Kashina Namikaze had given birth to them, the man had kidnapped her and using some sort of ninjutsu he forcefully extracted the Kayubi no Yoko from her. Then using the power of the Sharingan that he held he controlled the beast and used it to attack his home, Konohagakir no Sato. That night the fox caused nothing but death and destruction. However, his father, the Yandaimi Hokage Minato Namikaze, used a powerful sealing jutsu. He used the power to separate the Kayubi's Yang Chakra from it and sealed it into his newborn daughter, Kiyomi. As for the Yin Chakra, he sealed it back into Kashina who would have died due to the forceful removal of the Kayubi. In the end Kashina survived. Once all that was over, Minato told the village that someone powerful summoned the Kayubi to destroy the village. But he had defeated the beast and sealed it into his daughter who would use the power to protect the village. The people who loved Minato trusted his judgment and accepted Kiyomi as the savior of their village and treated her like a hero. Naruto was soon forgotten on their birthdays even though they shared the same one. On Christmas was the same thing, during the family parties, family dinners, family vacations, not once did they remember him. He was left at home alone. Sometimes when his parents were so attentive of Kiyomi they would forget about his food. And when they did notice him, they would only nod their heads as if he wasn't of any importance. On their fourth birthday, Naruto was forgotten again. That was yesterday. Today he would go and ask his parents if he could train with them and Kiyomi like they had been doing for months. They told him to stop being a pest. Apparently he would only hold Kiyomi back. In the village things were no different, since the villagers would ask if the Hokage had a son, they would only laugh and tell him to go away, saying to stop lying. On October 10th the day of his 7th birthday, Naruto walked out of his room and went out to see that his parents were getting the gear ready for Kiyomi's training. He went to ask if he could train with them today, but when he got close he heard his father say something. You know what Kushi-chan? Minato asked his red-haired wife, today at the party I plan on allowing Kiyomi-chan to sign the toad contract. Kashina turned to her husband and looked at him like he was crazy or something. Don't you think that it's a little too soon for her to sign the contract? Not at all, once she signs it, I will begin teaching her my Rasengan, Minato said. I don't see why you would want for her to learn so much in such a short amount of time, Kashina said shaking her head. Come on, I won't have my only child go out there and get herself killed because she isn't properly prepared, Minato said. Now come on, let's finish this so we can finish Kiyomi-chan's training soon then we'll go and eat something, like the family we are. What neither of them noticed was that their son had heard everything. Naruto had tears flowing down his cheeks. He was in pain, the kind of pain of being hated by his own parents. Turning around, he began to run away, he would run away from the village and never return. Reaching the compound's main gate he didn't even turn back, he just kept on running. The people of Konoha were also getting ready for the 7th anniversary of the Kayubi's defeat. None noticed the small blonde running down the streets heading toward the village's gates. The guards on duty didn't notice him either since the two were fast asleep. Naruto ran and ran as fast as his legs took him with no destination in mind. He didn't even look at where he was going. The blonde had unconsciously run into the forest of that surrounded the village. Naruto slowed down until he started to walk, tears still flowing freely from his eyes. Soon he became tired. Looking around he saw a large boulder was, he went and sat in front of it. Feeling even more tired since his adrenaline had run out, Naruto closed his eyes to rest for a moment. Time passed and Naruto soon started to stir from his slumber. That was not all, he was also hearing the voices of people. Looks like he's waking up, Naruto heard the voice of a young girl. Well stand back so he won't freak out, this was another female voice, older this time. The two of you should step back it seems he's about to open his eyes. A third voice spoke up this one belonged to a male. And that's just what Naruto did, he opened his eyes and the first thing he saw was it was late in the afternoon. His gaze then fell on the three people that were standing above him. Two were female and one was a male. 
The male stood at least 5 feet 10 inches tall. He had blue hair and brown eyes with a reddish tattoo across his right eye. He wore a whitish blue shirt under a hooded dark blue coat with light blue edges, two strings with shield-like pendants hanging down the hood and a golden symbol on the left part of his chest. One of the females was a pale skin woman with long black hair with a purple tint and black eyes. She had a rather voluptuous figure and wore a long revealing dress with a stripe pattern and long black boots that reached her thigh. Overall she also wore red lipstick and he admitted that she's much prettier than Kashina who doesn't hold a candle to her. The last one was a young girl with short, coral pink hair, bright green eyes. She wore some sort of gold wing like headgear around her ears. A tight purple leotard with brownish thigh-high boots with white stripes at the top. Over her clothes she wears red cape with a golden lining around the edges. On the left shoulder is a strange symbol. Who are you? Naruto asked trying to not be afraid. My name is Jellao, the blue-haired man said then pointed to his companions. These are Altir and her daughter Meridi. What's your name? Asked the pink-haired Meridi. Naruto, the blonde responded. What are you doing all the way out here Naruto? The dark-haired Ultier asked. Naruto said nothing, instead he just hugged his legs to his chest. The three strangers just looked at him with confused looks on their faces. Will you tell us what's wrong Naruto-kun? Asked Meridi. This drew confused looks from her companions as she never called anyone with such suffix. I ran away from home, Naruto finally said, but dared not make eyes contact with them. Why? Asked Jellal knowing that for a child to run away something bad must have happened. Still Naruto kept hugging his legs. He knew that if he told them that there was a possibility that they would return him to the village. However Naruto relented and began to tell them his story. He told them how his parents would forget about him and only cared for Kiyomi. How Minato had sealed the Kayubi into Kashina and Kiyomi, it was because of the fox that the girl needed the training more than he did and that he was nothing but a liability even went as far as telling them what he had heard Minato say that made him leave the village. When he finished, the three were shocked that for such a stupid reason a parent would toss one of their children away. Jellal didn't know who Minato was and he didn't care. A father should never leave a child defenseless and should at least teach him something. The blue head turned to his traveling companion. Well to Ultir as Meridi was hugging the little blonde who was crying. Meridi didn't know why but she felt the pain that Naruto felt as her own parents had abounded her when she was just a child. She had been left alone in the village where they lived after Hades had ordered its destruction. Altir, I know that what I'm going to say is crazy, but what would you say if we take Naruto in? He asked his longtime friend. But, Jellal we came here to keep a low profile, from what we've been told he's the son of the village leader, Altir responded. I know, it, just that I can't help but want to help him, Jellal. I have a crazy idea that may just work. You always do, but have you forgotten we came here to increase our power in order to go and stop the remaining dark guilds? Altir told the blue head. Yeah, but think about if we train Naruto in our magic he will become a valuable ally in the future when the Tenro group returns, Jellal said, don't forget, he could probably learn many of those techniques we've seen the people of this land do. You may have a point there, the dark haired beauty said with a smirk and it would seem that my little Meridi has become quite smitten with him. Naruto, Jellal spoke up getting the attention of the blonde. Yes? The blonde asked. I have a proposition for you. How would like to come with us on our travels? The ex-dark mage asked. I promise you that we will teach you some of our abilities. Really? Naruto asked with teary eyes. Yes, Altir said, we can teach some rather amazing skill that no other shinobi will be able to do. Yes, Naruto said. Good now we will tell you who we really are, Jellal said. Naruto listened to everything Jellal said. Apparently they were something called mages that he had only heard of in books. Not only that but they weren't even from his dimension. The three had used a powerful spell to come here to escape from the magic council that was after them for being something called dark mages. How Jellal had tried to resurrect a dark mage by the name of Zarif by enslaving people and his friends. They told him about their adventures and fight they had. How Jellal helped the magic guild fairy tale defeat a guild called Oracion Cease. The blonde listened to everything they said. Meridi was the one who explained how she and her foster mother had been part of the most powerful dark guild Grimoire Heart. How their master had been the previous master of fairy tale, and they attacked said guild. 
Naruto was stunned these people had been evil in their home world and now are trying to redeem themselves. Of course he now knew their story and still he accepted them. Now before we go any further, Jellel said, we need to prevent the village from coming after you. What is it? asked Naruto. Here is what we will do. Jellel said as he told the blonde his plan. Later, Naruto nervously walked through the streets of Konoha. It was already late in the afternoon and the festival was already to get underway. He also knew that his father would be leaving his office real soon to get home to and celebrate Kiyomi's birthday. Shaking his head Naruto hurried to the Hokage Tower. He made it there within five minutes. Not wasting any more time the blonde ran up the staircase to get his mission over with as soon as possible to move on to step two. Naruto soon arrived at the one place he wanted. He then reached into his back pocket and pulled out a single sheet of paper. Naruto took in a deep breath before knocking on the door of the Hokage's office. He didn't wait long before a come in came from inside. Naruto pushed the door open and walked in to see the Yandaimi doing the last of his paperwork. Kiyomi dear what is it that you need honey, Minato said without looking up. It's Naruto, the blonde said. Minato looked up and saw his son standing near the door. What is it Naruto, can't you see that I'm rather busy, Minato said going back to his paperwork. Well I was wondering if you could sign this paper, Naruto asked as he walked up to the desk. Naruto, I am very busy at the moment, and I can't get distracted by you playing, the blonde Hokage said. Please, I won't ask you for anything else in my life and won't be a burden to you, pleaded Naruto placing the paper in front of him. Fine, Minato said hoping that he would keep his promise as he signed and stamped the paper, there. Thank you, Hokage-sama. Naruto said running out of the office not believing his luck. Minato on the other hand only had a raised eyebrow at the sudden respect Naruto showed, but did nothing. Meanwhile Naruto ran to the records office where he handed the paper to the desk lady who read it and then looked at him. The woman was confused, why had the Hokage emancipated his own son from his clan? But she was no one to question the man's decision so she just stamped it and went to file it away. When she came back she handed Naruto a copy of the document and gave him a sad smile. He just thanked her and left, all that was left was to leave during the party that way he would not draw any unwanted attention. Naruto soon arrived at the Namikaze estate, tonight would be the last time he would step in this place and would never return after tonight. Calmly he walked up to the front door and pushed it open. Inside he could see that the decorations for Kiyomi's birthday party were finalized. Soon the party would begin and it would be at that time that he would strike. He saw both Kashina and Kiyomi placing the last of the snack trays on the table, however he just ignored them. Kiyomi who had just turned around saw Naruto walk by going upstairs to his room. She just shrugged her shoulders thinking that he was probably tired and would go and get some rest before the party. Later that night, everyone was outside celebrating the Yandaimi's daughter birthday. Not one of them even noticed that he was missing. Soon he saw the one person who was missing, the Hokage had arrived, and with him were his sensei, Jiraiya and the Toad Sage teammate Tsunade. Also with them was the Sanin sensei, the Sandame Hokage, Serutobi Hiruzen. It was time. Naruto left his room and ran down the hall as quiet and fast as he could. It wasn't far to his destination. Soon he reached it, his target Minato's private library that was located in the man's office. When he was in front of the office he pulled out a pocket knife that an old man he helped once gave him and cut his palm. He then placed the bloody palm on the door and hoped that this would work. It worked. The door opened with a click and he walked in. The room was a circular design, with shelves stocked with scrolls, but there was one in particular that he was looking for. Naruto looked everywhere and could not find it. He was about to give up when he saw what he was looking for. Sitting on top if small pile of scrolls was the scroll with the kanji for cage bush and he smirked and retrieved it from its resting place. Just as he was about to leave he saw another scroll, an even bigger smirk formed on his small face as he took the scroll too. Naruto made it back to his room and tossed both scrolls that he had stolen into the already prepared backpack. Next he pulled out an envelope out from under his mattress and placed it on the nightstand where it could be seen clearly. With one last look at the room he opened the window and slowly crawled out. But not before he closed it. He held tightly to the rail of the house as he moved toward the tree that was 10 feet away from his bedroom window. Once he was close to the tree, he jumped grabbing the nearest branch. 
Smiling at his success he moved at a slow pace as to not alert anyone of his presence. The blonde soon made it to the tree trunk and slid down. Freedom was close all he had to do now was reach the gate and he would soon be free. Sticking to the shadows he walked to the gate, but before he made it there he turned to see his sister just finish signing the toad summoning contract. The people around her cheered for her as the tradition of toad summoners would continue. Naruto clenched his fist as he knew that she usually got everything she wants. That would all change after tonight though. And with that Naruto slipped out of the compound running toward the main gate no one saw him. The streets were full of the citizens celebrating the defeat of the Kayubi. It would take him longer to reach the gate at this pace, but even so he couldn't draw any unwanted attention. In the end it took Naruto 30 minutes to reach the main gate luckily for him the door was open, the bad news it was heavily guarded by the Anbu Black Ops. He cursed under his breath and tried to come up with a plan. He was about to move when a ball of golden light flew through the air crashing into a small store. That drew the attention of the Anbu making them go investigate. The blonde wasted no time and ran to the gate, then out of the village. He didn't even look back he had to get away as fast as he could. Naruto suddenly felt his body become lighter and a pair of strong hands grip his shoulders. He glanced up and saw Jellal surrounded by a golden light, he smiled at him before he shot of like a rocket carrying him. But what stunned him the most was that Jellal was flying. The two flew until they reached the closest town which was Tanzaku Gai. There they made their way to the closest inn where both Meridi and Ultir were waiting for them to arrive. During this time neither said a word since they would be talking soon enough when they got to the room. Naruto followed Jellal as he made his way up the stairs of the inn that they were currently staying in. When the two made it to a door that had the number 10 on the door, the older man knocked twice and waited. Seconds later the door opened revealing Ultir standing there with a frown on her face as if she was angry for some reason. The woman moved aside to let them in. Inside Naruto saw that the room was quite spacious. There was a kitchen, the place they were standing in, the living room. He could see a hallway leading to three other rooms, two were probably bedrooms and the other was the bathroom. Jellal, can you now explain to me why the two of you are so late? Altier asked. The village had more security than I thought, Jellal answered. There really was, Naruto said, for some reason Anbu were watching the gate instead of the Chunin. Anbu? asked Altier. They're the elite assassins of the village and they usually only do S-rank missions, Naruto explained. Could it be because of that flashy caravan that I saw earlier being escorted by Samurai, wonder the blue-haired man. Samurai, caravan? Naruto asked. Yeah it looked really flashy as if some sort of VIP was being escorted, Ultir told him as she pulled out a crystal ball like the one he'd seen in the Hokage's office and a picture appeared. Naruto saw in the picture and knew why the village had such security, that's the fire daimyo's symbol, no wonder the security was so high. I take it he's someone important to the village? Jellal asked. Yeah, he's. Naruto began, but was interrupted when one of the doors in the hall opened. He saw the third member of Jalal's party come out. For some reason he felt his face burn up as he saw that Meridi only had on a towel wrapper around her body. Meridi who was unaware of the arrival of Naruto came out of the bathroom after taking a shower only wearing a towel. When she turned to the living room where she heard voices she saw that the blonde had arrived and he was looking at her. She felt her face heat up as she saw the way he was looking at her. Quickly she ran into the room she was sharing with Ultir and placed her hand over heart. What was the weird feeling she was feeling? Her heart was beating faster and her cheeks were flushed. Could it be what Juvia said she felt towards that guy Grey? But why would she feel like that, was she attracted to Naruto? If so why, she was over 5 years older than he was. Naruto was feeling no better either he didn't know what came over him when he saw Meridi come out of the bathroom wearing only a towel. Altier had seen the look on his face and for some reason she felt a mischievous grin grow on her face. Naruto, Jellal called breaking him and Altier out of their thoughts, I think it's time we told you who we truly are and what we are planning. Who you are? said Naruto. Yes, the three heard Meridi say. Naruto turned his head and saw her coming to them wearing a pair of pink pajamas. Naruto we are called mages, Altir said. Mages? As in those people in books that can do magic? The blonde asked. Yes, we come from a parallel world to this one called Earthland, we used a spell to open a door to come here, Meridi said. 
We came here to look for a new source of power to use in our world to help protect it. From what? Not too long ago around a year and a half in our world's time an evil mage by the name of Zarif was unleashed once again, Altir said. In fact I was part of the magic guild who helped bring him back. The three soon started to explain that they were wanted back in their land because of some dark things that they did. Naruto was shocked that these guys were criminals, but was happy that they were trying to undo their mistakes and help those who needed it now. They also told him how the group from a guild known as Fairy Tail disappeared after fighting a dragon by the name of Acknologia. Soon they began to explain to him that he had a large amount of magic within him and that they would train him in using magic. In return that he would help them fight when the time came. Naruto agreed and told them that he would help them if they allowed him to return with them to their world and remain there. When they asked him why he wanted to go there he told them that he had no one to remain here for. Meridi pulled the blonde into a hug making him blush at the close contact. In the end they came up with everything. Altir then told him something that he had not seen coming. She was going to use a special spell that their former master, Hades used to infuse his group with their magic. Jellal asked what she was planning and his eyes went wide when she pulled out three lacrimas from her pocket dimension. The woman explained how Hades used them to give the seven kin of purgatory their lost magic but not all the power as he was planning on creating the ultimate mage in case Zarif was unable to be controlled. She would also be transferring her magic over to him. Jellal agreed to do the same with his as it would allow the speeding of his training instead of having to start from zero. Meridi nodded in agreement. Four years later, four long years since Naruto had left the Hidden Leaf Village, he was eleven now and he could proudly say that he was at the very least at the level of an ranked mage. Over the last four years he had been trained to the ground by the now members, creators of Crime Sorcerer. After the magic infusion that had been done to him by Ultir. He had been unconscious for a week and during that time his body was adapting to the change of that was needed for him to be able to use magic along with his chakra. The procedure had been excruciatingly painful in the first 24 hours after that he knew nothing of what happened until he woke up. Once he had woken up, Jellal gave him a week to get used to his body as his magic reserves had doubled and his chakra was at least four times the amount it used to be. After the week had passed Jellal had told him that they would be starting their training. It would take years too for him to learn to harness the entire amount of magic styles that he had been fused with. Altir took the time to explain to him about each of the magic he was going to be learning and about the dangers of each. Meridi also explained about her magic and how she uses it and how she was going to teach him. The only problem that they came across was who would get started first and for how long. Naruto then remembered something that he had forgotten. He showed them one of the two scrolls that he had taken from Minato. When they read the scroll, the trio were stunned at what the jutsu did. Naruto then went on to learn the cage bushin no jutsu from the scroll. That was when the decision was taken, he would make shadow clones to help him train, as they could transfer all the knowledge that they would learn. The only drawback was that he couldn't use it to train his physical body. Jellal then volunteered to teach him hand-to-hand -hand combat while the girls would teach his clones magic. By the end of his first training year he had managed to get to a good sufficient level in his taijutsu that Jellal began his magic training. Sure he had already started to learn spells from Ultir and Meridi, but he was exited in learning Jalal's magic. Jellal started by teaching him his heavenly body magic, something that he took in like a sponge, it only took about a week to get the Ryusei down. At first Naruto had a difficult time controlling the spell as he wasn't used to moving at such speeds. Although when Jellal trained him while using the spell, he could go so fast that he was sure that it could even rival the Hiroshin. After he had the spell to a proficient level he started working on the other light based spells that were rather difficult to use. Even though it took over 6 months to learn the heavenly body magic, he managed to get it to a good skill level before he moved on to the next step. The next type of magic that he began to work on was the darkness magic that Jellal knew. To say the least it was way harder to learn darkness magic than it was to learn light since they were polar opposites. Naruto was taken to the limit in trying to learn that he went as far as to use the cage bushing to speed it up just like his clones were learning from Ultir and Meridi. The last type of magic that he began to learn was the elemental type he knew, fire magic. It had taken the less to get down since he had quite the affinity for it, and to Jella's pleasure, Naruto's flames were the same golden color as his. 
After long and tiring training Jellel moved on to the final steps teaching Naruto some of his most powerful and destructive spells. Naruto, during the training with Jellel had a clone train with Ultir in her magic. Compared to Jalal's magic learning to use Arc of Time was something that was not the easiest. Not only was he learning, Arc of Time, but also Ice make magic something that he had to do with his original body. When he rotated to her he sent a clone to Jalal. The group then went to another place. That place was the land of snow. Jalal and Meridi each took a clone and left to a warmer place while Naruto stayed with Ultir in the cold land. This type of training became his worst nightmare as soon as he started when Ultir told him the way she would be teaching him. To say the least he would never be able to look at her with straight eyes again when she took off her clothes and walked around only in her undergarments. She also made him do the same, he was forced to train only in his boxers. He nearly froze to death during the first few days it was only two weeks that he managed to endure the cold. And it took over a month to be able to use the magic. It was when he managed to learn to use the magic that they found something interesting. He was able to use both static and dynamic ice magic. When he was able to use the magic to an acceptable level they left the land of snow. Also each night when the four would return to the house Naruto would have a massive headache from all the information that his clones would send to him when they dispelled. Ultir soon said that he was ready to learn another type of magic that she herself couldn't do, but had quite the large amount of knowledge on it. She would also teach him a few spells that she borrowed from other mages from different guilds. For Naruto his favorite training sessions were with Meridi. For some reason he just couldn't help but feel at ease with her the most as she was the most gentle in her training than the others. Well, maybe not the most gentle since her magic was called Magul T Sense. In his opinion one of the most useful style since he could use it to link two or more people together and make the three feel the same pain as the one that was hurt. Even so after the training was over the two could be seen together almost all the time. Ultir would joke around saying that her little girl was growing up so fast. Jellel would laugh and say to Naruto to watch his back. Also during those four years the twelve-year-old grew to become quite the young woman. Her hair got longer and her body became more mature. Her breast went from being a B cup to a D cup and her hips got wider. Her attire soon changed too, she removed her pink leotard and changed it to a red dress that revealed some of her cleavage, although she still wore her cape and headgear. In fact her foster mother also changed and now wore a more revealing outfit that made Naruto blush every time he saw her, but not as much as when he saw Meridi. Jellal well, he remained the same with his usual clothes. Now here sits Naruto looking at the moon from his position on top of the house that they were currently staying at in the land of demons. He wore brown boots, black pants, a brown belt with five pouches, a purple muscle shirt, and a white long coat with black lines. On his face he had the same tattoo as Jellal over his right eye. Ever since three years ago he had gone by a new name, he went by Naruto Fernandez, the adopted son of Jellal. Jellal had done the same as Ultir had done to Meridi and adopted Naruto as his foster son. Naruto was supposed to be resting as he knew that his fifth and final year of training with his foster father and team would begin. After the year was over his teachers would be going back to their world to start cleaning up the remaining dark guilds and start looking for more help against Zarif. Sure throughout the years they had been going back and forth between their worlds to get magical items to help with his training. But now they were returning and he would probably not see them for a while in the time frame between the worlds different, he had no idea how long they would be apart. Apparently one year here in his world was around 8 months in Earthland. So this is my final year eh? Naruto said without looking away from the moon, what the hell am I going to do until they come back for me? Yeah he would be staying in this place until it was time for him to join them. Then they would be coming for him. He had been told that he would remain here so he would be a secret for when the time was right. Naruto knew that he would draw unwanted attention to himself and the members of crime source here, especially with his magic. Not to mention he also had those few jutsus that he had learned over the years during his free time. Well you could go around doing odd jobs here and there, responded a soft voice as a pair of arms wrapped around his neck. Shouldn't you be asleep Meldy Chan? The blonde asked. I could say the same thing to you, the girl responded, you begin the most difficult year of your life tomorrow and need all of your strength. Yeah, but I couldn't sleep, I'm still thinking about what to do once you're all gone, Naruto says to her. Meridi let go of the blonde and sat down next to him and glanced at his blue eyes. 
She had spent so much time with him over the past four years that for the first time in her life she could say that she had a crush on him. But she couldn't just admit her feelings, what would the other say? Not to mention the difference in their ages. Though that would probably change once she returned home as she would be following their calendar and Naruto would follow his. Maybe once he got older, since she was 16 and he's 11 the age gap would not be so large. Come on Naruto-kun, let's go to bed, Meredy said standing back up. We'll ask Jellal and Ultir for their opinion in the morning. You're right, let's, Naruto said standing up and following her back to the inside of the house. Unknown to them Ultir had been watching the entire thing along with Jellal using her teal-colored lacrima that she always carries. You know those two are perfect for each other, Ultir said. That may be true Ultir, but don't forget Meridi still has mixed emotions due to their ages, Jellal said, and as long as that is a problem she won't be getting any closer to Naruto. That true, but once we get back I will talk to her, the dark-haired woman said. You do that, I'm going to bed, was her answer from her partner as he stood up to leave. The next day Naruto woke up early to go and get his morning routine before having breakfast. As he was on his jog he saw that there were more people in the village than the usual. Not only that, but also the citizens seemed to be getting ready for some kind of festival if the booths around the area were of any indication. Wonder what's going on? The blonde asked out loud. It's our harvest festival, responded a voice drawing Naruto's attention to a woman who stood behind him with a girl around his age. Konoha. Minato sat behind his desk, trying to do his paperwork, emphasis on the trying as he just placed his pen back down. Sighing in frustration he rubbed his temples. Things for him and his family in the village had gone really bad in the last two years. The Hokage then looked over at the single picture that was on his desk, a picture of his family when they were all together. The only picture that he had of his family with all the members intact before it was destroyed. All of this happened because he pushed his son away forcing the boy to run away from home by excommunicating himself from the clan. How he managed to fill out the form when he was only 7 years old. Well he must have had help from an adult since he filled out every part without leaving a single loophole to be used against him. Damn he could still remember the day when he found out, the same day that things went downhill for the village. Flashback two years. It was a good day for Minato, he was going to be finished his paperwork early and would soon head over home to continue teaching his daughter the Rasengan. And afterwards maybe start planning a vacation for them to go on, maybe to the port town of Arya. Yes visiting the beach of Arya would be good. So with a smile he continued with his paperwork while imagining his vacation. A perverted grin formed on his face as he imagined Kashina in a new bikini and a smile when he would see his children making a sandcastle. His hand stopped writing at last and placed his pen down a thought came to mind at that moment. However his thoughts were interrupted by someone knocking on his door. Come in, Minato called he would worry about the thought at a later time. The door opened and his secretary walked in. Sorry to bother you Hokage-sama, but you have two visitors who wish to see you. Two? Who are they Akimi-san? Asked Minato surprised that he would have two visitors at this time of the day. Well one is the Suchikage and the other is a woman from a village called Nadashiko, Akimi responded. Minato was worried about the Suchikage being here, but what surprised him the most was the fact that a woman from the Nadashiko village was here as well. He had heard of the village from his sensei Jiraiya a few years ago. Apparently it was a village run by only women who didn't marry unless the man was stronger than they were and defeated them in a fight. Send them in, the Hokage ordered. The secretary nodded and walked out of the office. A minute later the door opened again and in walked a rather short old man with a single guard and a woman. The old man was about 4 feet tall had a triangular beard and mustache that had angular corners a big red nose and thick eyebrows. The top of his head was bald, but has a long white hair in Chanmage hairstyle. He wore a green and yellow coat with a red collar, underneath he wears the traditional Iwagakure outfit. The man next to him was a very tall and brawny man. He has dark hair that ends with a ponytail of sorts, a bulbous nose, and a beard. He wears the traditional shinobi outfit just like the old man. These two he was familiar with Oenoki and Kitsuchi. The woman on the other hand was tall but had a slender physique with a very angular face with shirt brown hair and red lipstick. She wore a short backless, red, full body suit over mesh armor, along with a pair of arm-length gloves, a long apron skirt which opened at the front. 
Well this is a surprise, it's been a long time, Oenoki, Kitsuchi, Minato greeted the two men before turning over to the woman, also I welcome you, miss. My name is Takiwa Hokage-sama, said the tall woman. I hope neither of you mind that I see you at the same time. I was about to go home in around five minutes, so, why are you here Oenoki? asked Minato. Don't play me for a fool Minato. You know damn well why I am here for, the Suchikage said. The day we ended the war we came to an agreement that would solidify an alliance between Iwagakure and Konohagakure, you promised to marry your son with my granddaughter. Takiwa looked at the old man before turning to Minato who was looking rather confused before his eyes widened at the fact that he had promised that. Hokage-sama if I may speak, Takiwa drew the attention. The reason to is why I am here is almost the same as the Suchikage-sama's reason. What do you mean woman? The bodyguard of the Suchikage asked. A few years ago Lord Jiraiya of the Sanin infiltrated our village, we chased him out, but he managed to escape as only our current leader managed to catch him. The two fought that day and as the law of the Nadashiko village her hand in marriage was on the line. Well the two didn't finish the fight and decided to call it a draw with the promise of their pupils fighting each other under the same conditions, Takiwa explained with Minato not liking where this was going. We heard that he had an apprentice while out leader did not so she waited until she gave birth to a daughter 11 years ago, but by that time it was too late for you to fight her since you had already gotten married. That is until word reached the village that your wife had give birth to twins nine years ago. One boy and one girl, my lady wishes to have the fight finished while she still lives as she's suffering from a rare and incurable disease. Oenoki stayed quiet as he allowed her to finish, he had heard of the Nadashiko village, a village that had a great amount of influence with many nobles. Minato was currently cursing his sensei's stupidity, why had he not finished the fight, now he had two big problems. Takiwa-san, I had no idea my sensei had done such a thing, Minato said, but as the law of your village and mine state I will follow such agreement, as I will follow ours Oenoki if you don't have a problem with this situation and of course you too Takiwa-san. I see no harm as long as you fulfill your promise, Oenoki said. I will have to report this to my lady, but I am sure that she will not be happy, Takiwa said. Naruto, my son is the heir to both the Uzumaki and Namikaze clans so he is allowed to have more than one wife, Minato told her. I see, very well I will inform her of your decision, but do note this should you not follow the agreement, then we will make sure that Konoha suffers, the tall woman said as she left. As will Iwagakure be doing the same, Oenoki said, make sure that the boy is strong too as I will not accept a weak son-in-law, and I am sure that the heir to the Nadashiko village has been well trained too, as I heard that the men who failed to defeat the women forfeit their lives or am I wrong? Kitsuchi said, asked, you are right Shinobi-san, should he fail he will die, Takiwa said as she finally left the office, three years that is all I am giving you to prepare your son for the fight as he is your son he should be more than ready by now as I am sure he has begun his training. That was what he was thinking about earlier, Minato knew that he had been spending most of his time training his daughter that he hadn't started with his sons. Shit was the only thing going through his head, had he known of this sooner he wouldn't have denied Naruto's request for training. Now he only three years to teach him all he could, but that was more than enough time if he taught him the cage bush and no jutsu, it was a good thing he had made a copy of it for his personal library. I agree with the woman, in three years I will bring my granddaughter to meet her future husband so have him ready, Oenoki says as he begins to walk away, until then Minato. Present. Minato stood up from his desk and went to the coat rack to retrieve his signature white and red coat. Once he had it he put it on before walking over to the door to his office. As he walked out he saw that his secretary was packing up her thing to head home for the day, when she saw him, Minato gave her a nod before going his way. The blonde was still worried about what he was going to do, he had a year left to find Naruto and beg him for forgiveness and ask him annul the excommunication paper. His mind went back to the same day that when he found out everything. Flashback two years ago after meeting. As soon as the Suchikage and Takiwa had left, Minato bolted out of his seat, grabbed his code from the code rack. Then he used his signature move, the Hiroshin, to get home as fast as he could. As soon as he got there he went out back to see his wife going through some sword katas along with Kiyomi. Kashina had long red hair, violet eyes, and wore a tight form Anbu outfit. His daughter looks like an exact replica of her mother, she also has red hair that is tied in two ponytails and deep violet eyes as well. 
Before going to them he took a deep breath to calm down so he would be able to explain the situation to his wife. I'm home, Minato called. Kashina and Kiyomi stopped their kenjutsu training. The older redhead smiled at her husband while the little redhead ran over to give her father a hug. Kashina walked over and gave Minato a kiss. You're early today Minato-kun, Kashina said with a smile. Well something came up that requires the utmost attention, the blonde Hokage said. I see, well what is it? His wife asked. Before I tell you, Kiyomi dear why don't you go and get Naruto from his room? Minato said to his daughter whose eyes grew. Nikun? Why? Kiyomi asked. Well I think it's time we start his training alongside yours, her father says with a large smile. Really? The girl asked only to see him nod, yay. Kiyomi jumped into the air with happiness. Her wish had finally come true. All her life she wanted to spend more time with her brother only for her parents to tell her she had to train. Now she would be able to and she couldn't wait so she took off running to the house to go and give her brother the good news. Minato watched her run to go get Naruto. He then turned to Kashina who was looking at him with a confused look in her eyes. They had made the decision to not teach Naruto anything and allow the academy to teach him as Kiyomi needed the training more so than he. Now here was Minato saying that they would be training Naruto also. Why the sudden change of heart? Kashina asked suspiciously. Well, Minato began to explain about how he had been thinking in his family, how little they spend together. How Naruto showed his face less and less to the meeting with the Suchikage and the woman from Nadashiko, which shocked Kashina. She had no about the village of Kunoichi, but they rarely left their village so one coming here to declare that her son would have to fight the daughter of the Nadashiko village leader. Minato then told her about the threats they had made to him if he didn't honor the agreements even if he didn't promise the Nadashiko village anything. Kashina had been silent, however she knew that since the Hidden Leaf village was the strongest and had the most clients then they would suffer a lot. So we have three years to train Naruto, then we might as well get started. I'm sure that he will love the idea, Kashina said, and he will also be giving the leaf two powerful allies. However before Minato could say anything Kiyomi returned to them. Okaa-san, Oto-san, she said they saw that she had a scare look on her face. Could you come with me, I have never been inside Nikun's room before and when I knocked no one answered. I'm scared to go in there and make him angry at me. Minato and Kashina looked at each other before following their little girl. Kiyomi led them upstairs to their surprise it was to their son's room. Both stopped, now that they thought about it they had never been in Naruto's room either, they didn't even remember buying him any decorations. Steadying themselves they pushed the door open. No words were exchanged as they finally saw the inside of the room of their son. To them the room was the definition of plain, there was nothing on the walls, the floor was bare, and no clothes were anywhere to be seen. But one thing that they could see was that no one had been living in what looked like years if the inch of accumulated dust was anything to go by. Minato walked around the room and was scared. Where was Naruto? No, more like how long have he not been here? He moved over to the dresser where he saw an envelope. He grabbed it and tore it open to read it. With every word he read his eyes became wider, he was also feeling guilty. Odo-san, where's Naruto-kun? asked a scared Kiyomi. She never hated her brother on contraire she loved him so much that it went over the brotherly affection, she would even joke about how one day she would be his wife. But with her training to control the Kyubi's chakra she could never spend as much time as she wanted with him so she was hoping to talk to him more when they began going to the ninja academy. As she was thinking about her wayward brother, Kashina had finished reading the letter and had her mouth covered with her hand and tears were rolling down her face. This isn't good, Kashina take a look at this. The letter is dated around two years ago, Minato said. Kashina looked at the date and wondered how the hell they not noticed his absence. She couldn't call herself a good mother, hell she couldn't even call herself one like the one she thought that she was. Minato saw her cry some more and the only thing he could do now was try and find his son of the leaf and his family would suffer. Present time, Minato had finally arrived home to see his wife cooking dinner and his daughter doing her homework at the kitchen table. I'm home, he said tiredly. Welcome home Minato-kun, Kashina said with her smile. Welcome home to San, Kiyomi said as she went and gave him a hug. Any new news today? Kashina asked. I'm afraid not, and time is running out. We only have a year left to find him before they come back, Minato said, 
and rumors have begun to spread on how irresponsible we were that we chased Naruto away with our negligence towards him. All we can do now is hope that he returns by himself, Kashina said. With Naruto a year later, it was just another peaceful day in Konohagakure, the gatekeepers were sitting in their booth bored out of their minds. To them nothing interesting ever happened these days, so they would spend most of the day playing cards. Then when they looked up they saw someone approaching in the distance, from the movements and clothing, they deduced that it was a male. He wore black boots, white pants, and a long white coat with some black linings with a purple undershirt. He also had the coat's hood up covering his face and what looked like a backpack on his back. When the stranger arrived at the gate the two shinobi stopped him. Halt, state your name and business here, called out one of the shinobi. The male stopped in front of the gates and glanced at them at the same time he clenched his which went unnoticed by the two. I have business with Hokage-sama, the male said, the name is Fernandez. I see, well just sign your name and go straight down the road until you get to the largest building in the center of the village, the Chunin said passing the visitor log. After signing in his name on the log he began walking toward Hokage Tower, the two Chunin watched him go before looking at the log. Their eyes widened as they read the name that had been signed, Naruto. Meanwhile the blonde was walking down the streets and saw that people were giving him weird looks. His eyes looked up and saw the one thing that made the village famous the Hokage monument that contained the faces of the four cages that had ruled the village since its founding. Shaking his head he realized that he had arrived at his destination the Hokage's tower. Walking through the door he instantly felt the presence of the Anbu Black Ops hiding in the shadows, their eyes were on him as he began to climb the stairs that led to that man's office. When he reached the top floor he saw the same secretary he had seen all those years ago. I'm here to see the Hokage, Naruto announced. I'm sorry, but Hokage-sama is currently over at the academy giving a speech to the students, the woman responded. I see, thank you, Naruto said. You can wait if you so please till he returns, she told him with a smile. Thanks, but I will go over to the academy and see if they received my application in time to join the academy, the blonde mage said as he began to walk away. You're a student? she asked. Yes, if you give me your name I can tell you your status as I am in charge of filing the academy's application, Akimi said. Naruto leaned over the desk making the Anbu tense in case he attacked the secretary, the woman on the other hand nodded when he gave her his name. And then her eyes widened when she pulled his application from the small pile she had on her desk. Yes, it's here, Akimi told him, you will be in Aruka Umino's class in room 209 on the second floor. Thank you, Naruto said as he walked away. The secretary made a signal making one of the ANBUs move over to the desk where she informed him of the situation and to go tell Minato. The Anbu nodded and disappeared in a swirl of leaves. At the same time Naruto had arrived at the academy after asking one of the villagers for directions. Now he stood in front of room 209 and he could see through the small window a man with black hair tied in a ponytail and a scar across his nose, a white-haired man. However the ones who drew his attention the most were the blonde and the redhead that were standing next to the desk. He felt the anger rise up in his body again, but he knew that he had to control himself or he would lose control of his magic and that would be dangerous. He took a deep breath before he opened the door. Minato had just finished giving the second year class his speech on how hard work and heartfelt dedication would make them succeed in their ninja careers. Just as he gave a bow to the class the door suddenly opened and in stepped in what seemed to be another student. Aruka whose attention had been on Minato was suddenly drawn to the new arrival. Um, who are you? The scarred Chunin asked. Fernandez, Naruto Fernandez, Naruto said removing his hood showing his face for the first time since arriving at the village. He could hear some people gasp, and he could see some of the girls blush. Um, who are you? The scarred Chunin asked. Fernandez, Naruto Fernandez, Naruto said removing his hood showing his face for the first time since arriving at the village. He could hear some people gasp, and he could see some of the girls blush. The room was silent as they stared at the newest arrival at the academy. Many were looking between him and the Hokage. The similarities between the two are extremely close. In fact if one were to remove the reddish tattoo of the younger boy's face, he would be a carbon copy of Minato. While many gawked at him, Naruto took this time to study the people in the room, aside from his so-called former parents. The first person he turned to was his so-called sister, she sat there with her hand covering her mouth. 
he could see a huge blush on her face as her eyes were fixed on him. She had her red hair tied in ponytail her deep violet eyes met his cerulean ones. Kiyomi wore a light blue sleeveless shirt with a V-cut shaped collar showing a bit of her developing chest. On her hands she had on black fingerless gloves with the namikaze emblem etched on the back. Overall he had to admit one thing, she grown to be quite a cute girl. His eyes explored the rest of the room, he saw a boy wearing a gray fur trimmed coat, fang like tattoos one on each cheek. Next to him was a boy with his head down sleeping he had his hair tied in a pineapple style even though he had head down Naruto knew that he was actually paying attention. After them he saw a chubby boy eating a bag of chips and sitting next to a window was a dark haired boy with a duck ass hairstyle. He also was a white eyed girl with lavender haired color, a blonde haired girl wearing a purple outfit. She seemed to be fighting with a pink haired girl wearing a red dress with a red bow on her hair. The last one in the room that was of any interest was a boy sitting in the back, he wore a grey coat and shades covered his eyes. Yes he recognized them, they were the heirs to the most prominent clans of Konohagakure, and the daughter of a high ranking civilian council member. And to top of it all they were all friends with Kiyomi, except for one, his eyes fell on the dark haired boy next to the window, if he remembered correctly he was the youngest of the Uchiha clan, Uchiha Sasuke. Kiyomi couldn't help it but just stared at the new student that had just arrived at the academy, this was the second year so how did he get in so late? But, that was the least of her problems she knew in her heart that this boy was her brother, her long lost brother. He was a little different however he was still the same in his looks. Though she knew that it was wrong she was having strange feeling at the moment, her cheeks were flush and, damn those damn hormones, she was feeling a strange heat in her nether regions. She could feel that aura of power he was alluding it was making her feel weak. Why was he making her feeling so strange? Hinata Hayuga narrowed her eyes slightly at the newcomer, the moment he walked in she didn't like him. Her eyes shifted over to the redhead that was blushing while looking at him. Anger rose from within her, she balled her hands into fists. For the last year she had, had a huge crush on the girl when she saved her from some bullies. Sure they had been friends for a long time but never had she felt that way for her. Now she had been trying to get her attention however she couldn't now comes this new boy and has her blushing like a tomato. The only thing she hoped for was that this boy was her long lost brother that she had told her about that way nothing could happen between them. Sakura thought nothing of the boy, the only thing she had on her mind was that her, Sasuke-kun, was a whole lot better than him. Ino Yamanaka was on the same boat as her friend, except for one thing, where Sakura was thinking about her and Sasuke. Ino was having even more vivid images in her mind that included her, Sasuke, and Naruto. It ended with her in the middle getting sandwiched and double penetration, she had to blame those orange covered books she found in her mother's underwear drawer. Shikamaru, Choji, and Shino, glanced at Naruto with calculating eyes, as if trying to find something special about him. While the other two studied him, Shino's bugs had found the same scent on the blonde as on their cage and his wife along with his classmate Kiyomi. In other words this guy is their son and twin brother. Sasuke glared openly at Naruto, how dare this piece of scum come to his village and quickly get the attention of Kiyomi. He had been trying to get a date with her for a while now and every time he would be shot down, now this bastard comes to steal his woman. Sasuke didn't give a shit if he was related to her, making her blush made him an enemy. Minato was stunned, he couldn't believe his son was standing here in front of him, his long lost son had returned to his home, to his family. While he was thinking about how his son had returned, Kashina was in tears, her baby boy had finally come home to them. Sochi-kun, Kashina said as she approached him to engulf him in a hug only for the ground below her to give away when she was merely inches away from him. Minato saw her falling and flashed to her grabbing her before she fell through the hole. The Hokage saw the hole on the floor with a shocked look on his face as he saw it repair itself as soon as he pulled his wife away. What the hell? He asked himself mentally. Sasuke's eyes were wide just like everyone else's when they saw the floor give away then just as quick the floor restored itself. What kind of jutsu was that? I'm sure that the floor broke beneath her then it repaired back up, Sasuke thought. Whatever it is I must have it. Jutsus like that belong to the Uchiha clan. Sochi-kun, why? Kashina asked tears flowing freely now. I quit being your son five years ago, Naruto said moving further away from them, where may I sit sensei? 
The question knocked Aruka out of his stupor wondering what had happened in the Namikaze family. He of course knew of the wayward child of the Hokage who left the village around five years ago for reasons unknown. Many of the students just stared if they had any doubts about him not being the Hokage's son they were gone now with his declaration about him not being their child anymore. Naruto-kun, Kiyomi said in a low sad voice. Um, how about you sit next to Kiyomi in the middle row, Uruka said without really thinking about the relation between the two. Uruka will be going now, Minato said to the academy teacher, and Naruto-kun we will talk after class gets out today. We have nothing to talk about Hokage-sama. Naruto said without even bothering to look back at the man and his distraught wife. Oh and send someone to dig out one of your ANBUs that is buried in the schoolyard. Minato didn't respond he only picked up his wife and flashed away. The academy students just wondered about what he meant with the buried shinobi. Naruto took his seat next to his former sister and didn't even bother to glance at her. Sure she never did anything against him like his parents, but that didn't meant she wasn't guilty like them. Kiyomi never bothered to help him or even try to befriend him, so yeah in his mind she was just as guilty and he would never forgive her or his former family. Nikun, she said softly. Don't call me that, Naruto said turning slightly in her direction giving her the same look that Ultir gave Meldi Chan when she called her all. Kiyomi quickly cowered away scared, she had never been looked at that way. The redhead said nothing else to him but began to think of ways to be able to talk to him and get him to open up to her. Nothing more was exchanged between them or any of the students as Aruka began their history lessons. Nothing was said until it was lunchtime when all the students left to go eat. Kiyomi turned to ask her brother to eat lunch with her to try and mend their relationship. However when she turned he was gone. Her fan club moved in to try and get her to eat with them but she left in search of Naruto. When she did find him he was surrounded by the some of the guys in their class. Kiba Inazuka and Sasuke Uchiha. He ignored the two of them and continued on his way leaving behind two angry clan heirs. After that Kiyomi lost him again and couldn't find him so she just went in search of her friends to eat lunch with them. She found him again sitting in the classroom after lunch, but before she could approach him Aruka came in and told them to go out to the field for taijutsu class. The class followed their teacher out to the field to begin taijutsu spars Kiyomi knew that Aruka mostly wanted to assess the taijutsu level of her brother. The redhead would lying if she wasn't interested in his taijutsu, however she was interested in his ninjutsu. The way he made the floor below her mother break apart then restore it was incredible. Okay before we begin, Naruto I would like to see where you stand at in taijutsu, Uruka said once everyone was outside. Naruto nodded and stepped up to the field and waited for his opponent, he really didn't care who he fought as Jellal had drilled hand to hand combat skills into him. He doubted anyone here could hold a candle to him or even Ultir. Hell Meridi rarely used hand to hand unless she was forced into it and yet she could hold her own against Ultir. Let's see, Shino why don't you step up? Uruka called the quiet boy, though before he moved, Sasuke stepped up to face Naruto. I want to fight him sensei, he said. Sasuke, Uruka began, it is fine sensei, I will face him, Naruto said calmly. The students gasped at the new student's declaration. Sasuke is the tied for first place in taijutsu with Kiyomi and was one of the best. Even though he hadn't been able to beat the Hokage's daughter they knew that he could defeat anyone else in the class and could hold his own against the Chunin teachers. Are you sure Naruto? questioned the Chunin a little worried. Yes, responded Naruto. Sasuke smirked as he took his place across from the blonde waiting for Uruka to let the fight begin. The Chunin began the fight, and Sasuke jumped into action. The Uchiha threw a fist at the blonde's face only for him to move aside allowing the fist passed by the place he stood. Sasuke's eyes widened as he missed the first time, thinking quick on his feet, he spun on his heel and brought his left foot up for a spin kick. Naruto ducked allowing the leg to pass harmlessly above his head Sasuke had backpedal a little to prevent himself from falling to the ground. That was the time he had been timing on, standing back, he placed a foot in front of him and moved his other foot back. The students looked confused as they had never seen anyone take that kind of stance before. Naruto waited for the Uchiha to attack again and wasn't disappointed. Sasuke raised his hand to go for another punch. This time Naruto did move. The next thing he felt was a big pain in his throat followed by his head hitting the ground hard. That was all he needed as his world went black. 
The students watched in fascination as Naruto delivered a powerful clothesline to Sasuke sending him to the ground, the sound of a skull hitting the ground resounded in the air. Many of them winced in pain as they saw the new student flatten out the rival for the number one position in class with a single hit. The rest of the day passed quickly and before they knew it school was out and the students began filing out the classroom. Kiyomi wanted to talk to her brother but she knew that he would be summoned by her father to his office so she headed there to wait for him. When she arrived she saw that her mother was sitting on the couch, her eyes red and puffy from crying, the last time she had seen her like that was when they found out that her brother had ran away from home and excommunicating himself from their clan. Though she wasn't alone in the office with her father next to her was her godmother Tsunade who had arm around her shoulder trying to console her. Tsunade was like a mother to Kashina ever since she had arrived to the Hidden Leaf Village and was there she gave birth to Kiyomi and Naruto. Even though she was her godmother, Kiyomi liked to call her Bachan. Over to the side stood Kiyomi's godfather stood looking out the window while talking to his sensei the Sandame Hokage who had also been called in by Minato. The last two people in the room were looking a little worried, they were Shizune and Kakashi, her godmother's apprentice and her father's last living student, she loved the two as if they were her elder siblings. Though neither could fill the gap left in her heart when she found out about her brother, she could still remember that day like it was yesterday. The door to the office broke everyone out of their thoughts as the one person that they had been waiting for walked in and not looking very happy. Behind him came a weasel masked Anbu looking a little worn out as if he had been in a fight. Itachi kun thank you for bringing him, Minato said not caring if his son found out the identity of one of his Anbu he is his son after all. You may remain here if would want. Thank you Hokage sama, if it's not too much trouble I would like to wait here as I would like to talk to Naruto kun after you're done, Itachi said removing his mask and clipping it to his belt. Minato nodded to the older teen before he turned to his son who was now tapping his foot waiting for him to talk. Naruto-kun, Minato began as he stood up and walked around his desk, I am happy to have you home my son. Don't call me that, I stopped being your son all those years ago, Naruto said stepping back as he saw the man getting ready to try and hug him. Naruto-kun, I know I wasn't the best father in the world but you have to understand, Kiyomi needed the training, she has the Kyubi sealed inside of her. If she does not learn to control she could put her life and that of the village in danger. Minato tried to explain his actions hoping to be forgiven. That is no excuse for what you and that woman did to me. All I asked for was some training, Naruto said. You could have easily trained the both of us all you had to do was make a cage bushin and have it teach me, yet you didn't. Naru-chan, Kashina said as she stood up moving away from Tsunade. I said do not call me that, Naruto said glaring at her as a dark aura surrounded his body. Kashina flinched at her baby's cold tone towards her, tears swell in her eyes once again. Don't speak to you mother like that brat, Tsunade shouted as she stood up and wrapped the younger woman in a hug and glaring at the blonde. She has no reason trying to talk to me as if I am her son, she lost her right when she ignored me when I was younger, she could have helped me out, but no she followed him like the fangirl she is, the blonde mage said anger in his voice. I'm so sorry my Sochi-kun. Kashina said falling to her knees chanting, I'm sorry. Naruto I forbid you from speaking to your mother like that, Minato said. I said she isn't my mother, just like you aren't my father, and Kiyomi isn't my sister, Naruto said. My name isn't Namikaze Naruto, it's Fernandez Naruto. It doesn't matter what you call yourself, you will always be Namikaze Naruto, mine and Kashina's son, Minato growled. Whatever is this why you sent those pathetic excuses for Anbu after me to try and scold me like child have forgive you and give you all a hug and become a big happy family? Then this is all a joke as I will never forgive any of you. Naruto said gritting his teeth keeping his anger in check. Naruto, I know that you're angry, but please listen to Sensei, he wants to try and become the family you were all meant to be, he truly is sorry and so am I. I turned my back on someone that I should have been there for and mentor him, yet I wasn't, Kakashi said. As I said I have no love for this family or any of you. I am only here for a single reason and that is to prove to you that I didn't need you to become strong, Naruto said. If this is the only thing you brought me here for then you're wasting my time. Naruto-kun, there is another reason I have called you here for. I am willing to train you. I want to teach all of my techniques from my Rasengan to my Hiroshin to atone from my sins, Minato said. 
Sensei is willing to allow you to keep the tradition and sign the toad contract or if want Tsunade and Sarutobi-sama are willing to allow you to sign their respective contracts and teach you as well. I don't want to sign their contracts, they aren't worth my time, said Naruto, and I don't want to learn anything from you anymore, you had your chance to teach me, but you blew it. Oni-chan, whispered Kiyomi sadly thinking of what could have happened to her brother during the time he was gone. Tsunade watched the blonde. Her anger was reaching its boiling point and was soon about to let the boy have it. It didn't help that he had practically insulted her summons and her skills by rejecting their offer to train him. She had actually been thinking of teaching him years ago when she found out that Kiyomi would be unable to learn any medical ninjutsu due to the massive chakra reserves and she needed to have perfect control something that was unreachable at her age. Naruto there is something you need to know. Jiraiya finally spoke up. When the third great ninja war ended. Minato and Oenoki make a non-aggression pact that would be carried out with a political marriage between you and his granddaughter. What? Naruto shouted letting his anger out for the first time. I will not be marrying anyone and what you sign has nothing to do with me. Since you most than likely sign your son and since I was banished from your family I don't have to follow any contracts that you signed. It's not just that, there is also some a pact with the Nadashiko village, Minato said and to make sure that you do this I will be nullifying the excommunicating papers that you tricked me into signing all those years ago. Wrong, you can't do that without my consent, and there is no chance in hell that I am going to give the benefit of using me for your stupidities, Naruto said as he turned around to leave the office, oh and I forgot to tell you I was adopted by my father two years ago. Naruto said no more as he left the office with a smirk on his face something that none of the occupants in the office noticed. Back in the office Minato was worried as well as Jiraiya. Kashina was crying that her baby no longer wanted to have anything to do with them. Tsunade was pissed off that a child would talk to his parents in that fashion, yet still felt guilty about the way she had also treated her godson when he was younger. Yes, she was his godmother along with Jiraiya who was his godfather, yet they treated him like he didn't exist and pushed him away with the treatment they gave Kiyomi. Kiyomi watched her brother leave. She clenched her hands into fists as she allowed tears to fall from her eyes. It was her fault, it was all her fault that her brother had grown to hate them. She could have befriended him when they were younger and showed him some kind of affection, but instead she only cared for herself and went as far as making fun of him. It was at this moment that she swore to herself that she would make it up to him, she would love him. Even if she couldn't get him back as a brother then she would show him a different kind of love, she didn't care if it was a taboo relationship. Minato, what are we going to do? The political backlash will be hard. Iwagakir is one of the five great nations and Nadashiko may not be big but they do have a lot of say in the smaller nations and could get them to stop trading with us. Jiraiya told his student, Sensei what can we do? Sensei. When they all turned to see why Serutobi said nothing they saw that he was no longer in the office and next it was noticed that Itachi had left as well. Gritting her teeth Kiyomi left the office going to the one place she would be able to think clearly as to how begin a new relationship with her brother. On the streets on Konoha Naruto was heading toward the open training ground that he would be allowed to use until he graduated from the academy and was allowed in the other fields. People all watched him walk, many were whispering as they had heard rumors of the Hokage's wayward son had finally come home. They had heard that he was strong by defeating the younger brother of the Uchiha heir, Sasuke. High-standing civilians were plotting ways on how to get their daughters to marry the boy as they would definitely benefit from such a marriage. Naruto saw many give him a smile but to him they were only a bunch of hypocrites, five years ago they were all calling him a liar and attention-seeking brat. Just as he arrived at the training ground, Naruto turned around. You can come out now, Naruto said, Gigi. A small chuckle came from behind a tree as the old man Serutobi finally came out of his hiding spot with a warm smile on his face. It's good to see you again Naruto-kun, he said. In an instant Naruto crossed the distance between them and wrapped his arms around the old man tightly. I missed you Gigi, Naruto said. I missed you too Naruto-kun. I would have liked it if you had informed me of your departure so I wouldn't have to worry too much about you, Serutobi said returning the hug. Sorry Gigi, but I just couldn't take it anymore, the pain of being ignored pushed aside was too much, and the night that Jiraiya gave the summoning scroll to Kiyomi was the last straw, Naruto said, I never as much got a happy birthday form anyone except for you. All that is in the past Naruto-kun we have to look towards the future now, Sarutobi said, 
Naruto-kun now tell me why you don't want to sign the monkey summoning contract I thought that you would want to. I just don't know if my current summons will allow me to have another contract, informed the blonde. Well Naruto-kun there is only one way to find out. Summon the boss and I will summon Enma to see if the two can come to an agreement, the third told him, but before that tell me what you're going to do with the contract that Minato has on the line for you. Like I told him, I will not be cleaning up after his mess, said Naruto with a smirk, now why don't I show you my summons. With that said Naruto jumped back biting his thumb just enough to draw blood which he spread on his left palm and ran through a series of hand sign that Sarutobi didn't recognize. Could Chiyo say no jutsu? Naruto shouted and a large cloud of silver smoke engulfed the area around the blonde. The smoke cleared when something within let loose a loud roar. Sarutobi's eyes were wide at the sight of the beast that Naruto had just summoned. It can't be possible, he said with mouth hanging wide open. Six months later, six long months had passed since the since Naruto had returned to the hidden leaf village and those long months had been a rather big pain in the ass. His former family had been doing everything in their power to try and get him to forgive them. They had gone really far, from inviting him to live with them at their compound back in his old room and inviting him to dinner virtually every night, he declined every time. Kashina had once come to his apartment that Jellal had bought for him to tell him that she wanted to teach him all her knowledge of seals. Naruto told her that he wasn't interested in anything that she wanted to teach him and closed the door in her face. He did notice though that the woman left crying. The incident with Kashina had been the straw that broke the camel's back Tsunade had sought him out the next day to give him a piece of her mind. Nothing bad happened thanks to Serutobi who stopped his former student. Kiyomi had been another person who in his opinion was an even bigger pain in the ass. She had been doing her best to get to know him better, asking him to eat lunch with her, train with her, hang out with her. He had been doing his best to ignore her but it proved difficult. Hell she even broke into his apartment once in the morning and made him breakfast, he of course begrudgingly ate it. That had taken him by surprise as the food was better than anything he had eaten so far in the village, she told him that she had been taking cooking lessons from the daughter of Tuchi Inchiraku. Minato was also someone else who was trying to get on his good side, going as far as telling him that he would allow him to look at his private library to learn anything he liked. The private library wasn't the only thing he was also told that he would be allowed to read the forbidden scroll of seals that only the Hokage was allowed to open. All this was offered to him with the condition that he accepted to marry the Suchikage's granddaughter who he found out was named Kuritsuchi and that he would fight with the daughter of the Nadashiko village leader's daughter. Naruto had been so pissed off with the bastard that he used his rune magic to on his clothes something that he couldn't detect. The rune made his clothes transparent to everyone else but him, by the end of the day he had to run home away from women trying to get into his pants and even men. The blonde bastard had tried to use his Hiroshin to run away, but the rune Naruto used prevented him from using it. One other person, who was rather persistent, was the almighty Sasuke Uchiha, who wanted a rematch from the match they had in school. Naruto walked away all the time except for one time that he was cornered by the boy, that he actually fought him and left him tied to a tree with a chain. The act had consequences as the Uchiha then demanded that he teach him all this jutsu and other techniques as they should be used by an Uchiha only. Itachi put an end to that by giving the brat a good beat down and then requested Naruto to spar one day with him, something that the blonde agreed to. Another person who he was also pestered by was Kashina who upon hearing that Naruto used some kind of chain jutsu sought him out to see for herself if it was true that he had inherited her special chakra. Again Naruto just told her to fuck off and went his way. Now Naruto was just finishing his daily training and was really happy with his results. He had finally gotten down the new earth spell that he had been having trouble with and next he would work on his water and wind spells. Yes, today was going to be a good day indeed for the first time in the last six months he might have, a pester-free day. The academy was boring as they only taught history and other basic skills. If the students wanted to go into another type of shinobi field they had to find someone will to take them as an apprentice. That was had been one of his problems in the last few months, he had been asked to be an apprentice for Tsunade to become a medic, and he declined. More apprenticeship offers came from the decoding team and the INT department, of course he wasn't interested all he wanted to do was embarrass his former family. The blonde was about to head to get something to eat when his danger alert went of the fritz forcing him to jump away. 
As he jumped out of the way a wave of what looked like lava hit the place he had been standing on. If he had doubts the liquid being lava they were all gone now as he saw the ground melt away. His attention then turned to the culprit of the attack and was surprised to see that the attack came from a girl who seemed to be a year or two older than him. She had short black hair and pupil-less pink eyes which are accentuated by her eyelashes which run up in the corners. She wore a red uniform with the right sleeve missing, a lapel over her right leg, a brown flak jacket, fishnet tights with a red skirt over them, shinobi sandals, a pair of black gloves, and a sword strapped to her waist. The one thing that drew the blonde's attention the most was not the fact that she was rather pretty, but the headband she had on her forehead, it had a bolder design on it the symbol of Iwagakure. Now he knew who this girl was, this was the granddaughter of the sand dame Suchikage, Kuritsuchi. Is there a reason you are attacking me Iwakunoichi? The blonde asked trying to sound confused. You are Namikaze Naruto are you not? She asked. I'm afraid that I am not. My name is Fernandez Naruto, Naruto responded. Fernandez, I was told that you are the son of the Yandaini Hokage, she said with a frown. I was his son over five years ago and due to certain circumstances I was excommunicated from his family, so I was adopted by another person who gave me his name, he explained to the young woman. Then you are his son and even if what you said is true which we will be investigating, you're still his son, meaning that the alliance treaty is still in effect no matter what, she said reaching for her sword, the time for talking is over I will evaluate you here and now to see if you are worthy of becoming my husband, my name is Kuritsuchi though I am sure you already knew that. Naruto said nothing only waited for her to make her move, he knew that he was strong, and had some real life experience, however this girl was a mystery for him. As he waited for her to attack he failed to notice that others were also watching the fight, in the tree lines Minato stood with his wife and daughter. Next to them stood the Suchikage an old short man and beside him stood the same person who had come to see Minato all those years ago, Kitsuchi. The Iwa Shinobi were confused as to why the Hokage would kick his only son out the family, though even if he, Naruto, took another family name he was still the man's son and that's what counted. Kuritsuchi had been waiting for Naruto to begin the fight but when she was that he was not moving, she took it upon herself to begin. Pulling out a pair of kanais she threw them at him. Naruto seeing the attack jumped out of the way only to have to dodge again as the girl had drawn her sword and was using it. Seeing the blonde maneuver out her sword's way she went for an axe kick only to find it blocked by his four arms. Gritting her teeth the girl jumped away from him to get some distance in between, bringing her hand to her mouth she began to do some hand signs. Water style. Water trumpet jutsu. She called out releasing a powerful stream of water from her mouth. Naruto knew that, that jutsu would cause him some major damage if he was hit by it, he had to take the risk of showing what he was capable of doing. That chance came in the form of his earth magic as a brown spell circle appeared below him allowing him to drill a hole in the ground to escape. The water jutsu passed over the hole harmlessly, when it died down, Kuritsuchi smirked at seeing that the blonde was nowhere to be found, she hadn't noticed the hole. She about to boast about her victory when the ground began to vibrate and Naruto shot out from right in front of her, his fist met her chin sending her rolling away. The sword she had was lying a few feet away. The blonde turned to leave only to have to dodge again as he felt something coming his way. If the place he had been standing it was now glob of a gray substance, his whipped around as another glob of the same thing came in his direction. The thing hit the ground just in front of him. His gaze fell on the girl who was on her knees panting hard. A smirk formed on her face and he didn't like it. Naruto got ready to jump only to find that he couldn't move the gray substance was holding him firmly to the ground. Things weren't looking good for him as he was getting ready to use another spell to break free more globs hit his body immobilizing him. Checkmate, Kuritsuchi said finally standing up again. I guess the son of the mighty yellow flash is just a joke. Wait till the other nations find out. Shit, I was so fucking careless. Jellal would be beating the shit out me if he knew I let my guard down for her to be able to attack me. Thought Naruto, I guess I have to do this, and I was hoping to keep a secret for a while longer. I guess that there is no choice, Naruto said taking a deep breath, arc of time, forward. Kuritsuchi was confused at the statement. She was also confused at what this arc of time could do as she had never heard of any type of jutsu be called that. Her eyes widened and a look of pure shock plastered her face as she saw her lava jutsu begin to harden at a fast rate, 
something that should be impossible. Soon the lava was nothing more than rock that Naruto could probably break free off at any moment, though he didn't waste time as he used his strength to break it. Oenoki was gaping like a fish out water at the sight of the boy breaking his granddaughter's lava jutsu as if it were nothing. He knew that the lava would last a long time and it was really hard to break free from, but here was a boy two years younger than her break it with a weird jutsu he'd never heard of. Minato was in the same boat as the Tsuchikage, he didn't even know that Naruto could do that, it was as if he could control time. Damn Minato what have you been teaching that boy? asked Kitsuchi surprised. Nothing, the answer came from Kiyomi, Tu-san never taught Naruto Nikun anything, we didn't even know he could do that. Both Iwa Shinobi were flabbergasted, no way this boy could have learned or created that jutsu, so someone must have taught him. What the hell was that? Asked Kuritsuchi finally getting over her shock. I guess the time for games is over, it was rather entertaining while it lasted, Naruto said stretching his hand out and in a flash of light a smooth crystal ball appear in his hand, arc of time parallel works. The crystal ball began to float, and then more orbs appeared in thin air, the girl was confused until the orbs began to move. She skillfully dodged then, however she was hit in her back by one, then another, and another, this went on until she fell to the ground bruised and bleeding from different places on her body. What the hell was that jutsu? She asked and got no answer, gritting her teeth she brought her hands together calling her remaining chakra, earth style, earth flow spears. The earth below her began to condense transforming it to spikes that headed straight for the blonde teen. However when they were about to hit a silver circle of some sort appeared in Naruto's hand. The spears of earth vaporized in front of her own two eyes. This was not possible was the only thing that went through the girl's head. I guess I didn't tell you, but elemental ninjutsu is useless against me. I will tell you a little secret of my technique, Naruto said. Arc of time is one of the most powerful types of lost techniques. It allows me to fast forward or back up time for any organic and inorganic thing. Only sentient beings are unaffected, so elemental attacks are useless. In other words I can control time. But, that's not possible, Kuritsuchi said. I don't care what you say, it's time to end this farce of a fight. Now allow me to show you another one of my favorite techniques, the blonde stated bringing his hands together. A fist slammed into the palm of his other hand, ice make, arrows. A mist formed in Naruto's hands before a blue circle appeared in front of them. The next thing that happened was that arrows made of ice shot out of the circle heading straight for Iwa Kunoichi. Said Kunoichi was defenseless she didn't have enough chakra to form an earth dome and the attack would end her she knew it. The arrows hit home, as the arrows slammed into different parts of her body. None pierce her skin as they seemed to be blunt but there were a few that did rip her skin creating small cuts. When the attack ended the girl fell to the ground and this time she didn't bother to stand up. Kuritsuchi heard footsteps approach her where she laid, her head moved to see her opponent standing above her. You said you came here to evaluate me to see if I was worthy enough to be your husband, but I think that instead I should be the one evaluating you to see if you're worthy to be my wife and know what you failed, Naruto said. You're not strong enough, you're weak, and I will never marry someone like you, so go home and never bother me again. I am no longer part of the Namikaze clan so I won't be doing anything that bastard says I have to do. With that Naruto left only to stop when he saw his former parent come out of their hiding place along with the Tsuchikage. Though he was not surprised to see them, he was surprised when three more women came out of hiding as well. That was some skills you have there boy, the old man began, I am most displeased with what I have heard from your father and your statements during the fight. I care not what you think, Naruto said. Lady Toriko, Minato said drawing the older woman's attention, if I may ask, what you are doing here, I know you said that you would be coming sometime next week. I came early to see how the fight between them ended and while I have to say I am impressed, so much that it would be pointless for my daughter Shizuka to even challenge Naruto-kun, so I have decided to postpone the fight for a later time, let's say the Chunin exams after he graduates from the academy in a couple of years, the woman said. This isn't over, the voice of Kuritsuchi said. I won't allow myself to be embarrassed like this. I will also fight you in the Chunin exams in a couple of years. I will make you my husband no matter what. Those were the last words of the girl before she finally passed out. We'll see. Night had finally fallen over the Hidden Leaf Village and all of the villagers had gone home to their families to rest for the next day. Shinobi were switching with the one who would be on night duty, 
said shinobis were now running over the rooftops of the houses in the village. Every civilian had gone home or was on their way there. Though what none noticed was the single person standing on top of the Hokage monument. There on top of the head of the Sandame Hokage stood a young man around the age of 15 looking down at the village with an expressionless face. He stood at least 5 feet 5 inches, has spiky blonde hair, deep ocean blue eyes with a strange reddish tattoo over his right eye. He wore a pair of black boots, black cargo pants, and a violet skin tight sleeveless shirt. This young is none other than the adopted son of Jelal Fernandez, Naruto Fernandez. It had been three years since he had returned to the Hidden Leaf Village while his family returned to their homeward to take care of some business. Three long years that he had, had to endure his birth family, three years that they have been asking for forgiveness and he yet to forgive them. But something told him that soon all of this would end and he would be joining his real family soon enough. I thought I would find you here Naruto-kun, said a kind old voice. Naruto turned his head to see the one person who actually cared for him while he still lived in the village a long time ago. Hello Gigi, what are you doing here? greeted the blonde. Oh, I just wanted to talk to you about a few things, he responded as he stood next to the blonde. About what? Naruto asked knowing full well what the old man was about to ask. I would really want to know why you suddenly decided to return to the village three years ago, Sarutobi responded. Naruto took in a deep breath and thought that maybe it was time to clear up as to why he returned in the first place. Well, the truth is that I didn't really want to return, but then I got thinking as to where I would actually go, at the time I didn't know what to do. I thought about maybe going to Iwagakure, then I remembered that they might still be hostile towards those from Konoha, and since I look like the bastard then I would be killed on sight. This was way before I even knew about that damn contract, Naruto said to the old man, my second choice was then to go to Sanagakure, however they have an alliance with this village so they would instantly report me to the bastard, Kirigakure was out of the question as they are still in the midst of their civil war and they would think I am a bloodline user and be killed. Sarutobi was surprised that Naruto was finally telling him why he had come back to the village and listened intently. Some of the reasoning was actually quite sound. Iwa had indeed lost to them and since no one aside from Oenoki and Minato, knew about the contract he had no way of knowing. Suna is an ally of Konoha, so to stay in their good graces then Suna would most likely say that they found the lost Namikaze and be rewarded for their efforts. Kiri would indeed find his skills strange and be claimed as a Keke Jenke, that then would lead to his death. Then it hit him why did he leave Kumogakure out? What about Kumo, Naruto-kun? Yeah, I thought about going there. Then I found out what they had done to the Hyuga clan by trying to abduct the heiress, and did a little research on them, Naruto said. All they care about is their military power and making stronger ninjas, so if I had gone there then I would have been forced to impregnate a lot of women to pass my powers to my offspring and thus create an ultimate army for Kumo with a whole new, Keke Jenke. And there was no way in hell I was going to be turned into some tool for a village. Sarutobi had to admit his logic was spot on. The Hyuga incident nearly started a new war between the two and was only thanks to Minato's well thought out plan that prevented. Ever since then the two villages have avoided each other, but he knew that the Rakage wasn't a man to give up so easily and would try something again. So you decided to return here? Sarutobi asked. Not at first, but Jelal convinced me to return here as it would be the safest place for me until his return. When I asked him why? He told me that there would be no one aiming for my life here of lust for my abilities like in other villages. Then I told him that I never wanted to come back to this place though because I would be alone with no one to talk to, though I then remembered a kind old man who would always take time to talk to me, Naruto said. So I decided to return here so I could see you again Gigi, that and to show them what they had thrown aside, show them that I didn't need them in the first place to get strong. I know it sounds petty of me to have such childish emotions, but they truly hurt me and there is no way I will forgive them, ever. Don't worry Naruto-kun, I understand now, thank you for telling me this. It truly does answer a lot of things, Sarutobi said, though I would like it if you could find it deep in your heart to forgive them for their past actions, or at the least try and get to know them, not as their son but as an ally or acquaintance. I can't GG, it just hurts so much when I look at them and remember all they did and said about me, and just fuels my hatred towards them, the blonde responded. I see Naruto-kun, the old man said sadly that he couldn't get his surrogate grandson to forgive his parents, but a child who is neglected will always be bitter towards those who committed the crime. 
Well I should get home and so should you. Don't forget that you finally graduate from the academy tomorrow and starting next week teams will be announced. I know, and knowing that bastard, he's bound to put me in the same team as her. Naruto said sadly knowing that it was bound to happen. Naruto looked at the old man one last time giving him a smile before a golden light surrounded his body and he shot at the monument flying towards his apartment. Next day, Naruto walked through the streets of Konoha heading for the academy. Today was finally the day that they would graduate. The blonde could see the people going about their business. Some of them stopped and gave him a smile and a slight bow. Even after all these years they still hoped that he would chose to pursue a relationship with one of their daughters. The young civilian girls all huddled together and whispered to each other while looking at him and giggled when he glanced at them. Naruto could only shake his head in annoyance, but what could he do? With the bastard trying to make his life easier the village had gone to do the same. As he approached the academy he noticed that not many students were filing in yet, but he knew that it would be like this. This morning he had left early in order to avoid that annoying sister of his. He still couldn't get how she could break into his apartment almost every day even with his runes up. So today he woke up extra early and left his apartment in order to avoid being seen with her, since she would always walk with him to the academy holding onto his arm. And what could he do? Nothing since she's the princess of the hidden leaf with being the daughter of the Hokage and all. Naruto walked into his classroom and was quite surprised to see that someone was already there even if that person was asleep. The person on question was Nara Shikamaru, the heir of the Nara clan, famous for their medical ingredients and for breeding deer. Shrugging his shoulders Naruto just kept on walking past the sleeping clan heir, ever since he had arrived at the village the only friend he has is the old man. Sarutobi has been telling him to make at least a few friends in the village, however that was not truly possible since most of the males hate him or don't want anything to do with him, and girls, well, the only thing that they want is to get into his pants. Reaching his spot in the back row next to the window, he used his re magic to summon his crystal ball that Ultir had given to him as a gift and began to play with it. Back in the front row Shikamaru who had been asleep opened one of his eyes and saw the blonde spinning that crystal ball in his hand. He of all people had been at the receiving end of said ball a few times when they had target practice. They were given blunt kanai to throw and use against each other but Naruto never used them opting instead to use that ball of his that he could send at high speeds. Deciding to use his remaining time on catching up on some much needed sleep, he closed his eyes once again. As time passed the classroom began to fill up with the rest of the class, none of them were truly noteworthy as they were just the children of civilians. Though, only one of them was enough to warrant attention, a pink-haired howler monkey that followed Sasuke Uchiha everywhere. Her name Haruno Sakura, she was the only one who had more chakra than the rest of the civilian children. She came in and sat down in the one place that she knew that her Sasuke would sit. More time passed and the classroom finally filled up with the missing students most of them were the clan heirs and heiress. First came in the ever boisterous Inazuka Kiba the heir to the dog clan as he liked to call it and his dog Akamaru. Next was the silent Aburame Shino, a bug user that was just like the rest of his clan quiet though he tended to stay away from him. Hayuga Hinata came in after him and like always she sent a glare his way, he still couldn't understand what he had done to piss of the Hayuga to the brink of hatred. Then it was the Uchiha's turn to enter the room, Sasuke lived with his mother and older brother, as for the rest of his clan most had been killed off due to plans of trying a coup d'etat. Frankly the info reached the Hokage and he ended all those who were aware of the plan leaving only old and children alive most of the others were killed. The Yamanaka heiress came right behind the Uchiha, and just like Sakura she was his major fangirl, but lately she had been trying to stalk him, Naruto, as well though he managed to shake her off. Oni-chan, there it was the one person who had been the most annoying of them all, his twin sister, the princess of the hidden leaf, Namikaze Kiyomi. The girl had grown into a beautiful young woman in the last three years her hair was longer, that it reached her ass. Her body had developed so much that it put many women to shame, a perfect hourglass form, large C-cup breast, nice firm round ass how he knew. He had accidentally groped her during a spar. The next thing he knew was that she had wrapped her arms around his neck and was pressing her assets on his back. His eyes wandered around the classroom taking in the different looks he was receiving. Kiba was openly glaring at him, so was Hinata, Shikamaru was indifferent as was Choji and Shino. 
Sasuke looked like he wanted to walk up to him and say something, but Sakura and Ino were both glaring at Kiyomi knowing that it was her fault that Sasuke didn't pay attention to them. Mode tilde oni chan, I went to your apartment this morning, but you were gone by the time I got there, couldn't you have waited for me to arrive so we could walk here together? Kiyomi said to her twin brother who like always ignore her. Kiyomi knew she wasn't getting an answer from him, though it didn't hurt to ask her to talk to him. She did however wondered what he thought of her now that three years had passed since he had arrived at the leaf. Kiyomi had just like her parents tried to get him to forgive her, but in a very different manner, even though he didn't openly admit it she had a feeling that he was warming up to her. What with her finding where he lives and sneaking into his apartment almost every day to make him a meal, though she had to find some ingenious ways to enter as sometimes there was something blocking the way. Naruto just stared out the window ignoring the red head, he just hoped that their sensei wouldn't be too late or else she was bound to keep talking. And just like a gift from Kami, Maruka walked into the classroom followed by his assistant Mizuki, a man who he didn't like at all. Well, today is the day you have all been waiting for, Maruka said, now, let us begin the genin exams. The scar-faced man nodded to his assistant who began to pass out the exam papers out. The exam consisted of three part, a written exam, a taijutsu spar, and a ninjutsu part where they had to perform the three basic jutsus of the academy. As Mizuki handed Naruto his paper, the man gave him a small smirk as he then handed the test to his sister. Looking down at the test he saw why the man had a smirk on his face. The test questions were far too difficult for any regular academy student to answer, though he wasn't a regular academy student. Altier had made sure to beat as much information as she could into his skull. So without further thoughts he began to answer the questions, out of the corner of his eye he saw that Kiyomi was having a hard time with her exam, but it wasn't any of his concerns so he just kept on working. By the time the written exam had ended, Naruto was smirking when Mizuki picked up his exam and gained an angry scowl from the sensei. Next he picked up Kiyomi's and a slight smirk appeared in his face, he knew that she had flunked the exam and that made Mizuki happy for some reason. Naruto frowned, even if he didn't like his sister, there was no reason for a teacher to be happy that a student didn't do well on an exam. Elsewhere, Minato stared at a piece of paper with the names of all the students in the academy ready to graduate. For the last few hours he had been making a list of who would actually graduate and who would fail, the list ended with only 30 which was good since there would be no extras. Now to make the teams was a little difficult as he had to make sure that each member would synchronize with each other. Though he had a very special team in mind already, his children, Kiyomi and Naruto, those two together, but they would need a third member. The list only showed that three people were good for the team, Narashikamaru, Uchiha Sasuke, and Hayuga Hinata. He of course knew that there was a problem with each of them. Shikamaru was smart, but rather lazy. Sasuke had a kind of vendetta against Naruto for not giving him his techniques and for grabbing the attention of Kiyomi. That was a problem he had also began to deal with, apparently his princess had gained a crush on her brother. Although incest wasn't too uncommon in some clans and he didn't really care, the real problem came from the fact of the current marriage contract he had with the Suchikage's granddaughter. According to the old man his granddaughter had made it her mission to force Naruto to marry her at any cost. Then there was the Nadashiko village who also thanks to Jiraiya had a young lady wanting to challenge Naruto to see if he was worthy of being her husband and ruler of said village. Now he got to Hinata, the young Hayuga heiress, it was no secret that the girl had a huge crush on his daughter and had a big distaste for Naruto. Though out of the three she was the one who would work the best with them as she would do what Kiyomi told her just to make her happy even if it meant putting up with Naruto. Now he came to who their sensei would be, at first he thought that maybe he should allow Kakashi to teach them, though he knew that his wife also wanted to be the one to teach them since she could subdue the Kayubi should Kiyomi ever lose control of it. That was the hardest part of all, who was going to teach them? Maybe he could allow both to train them, but he was sure that would not work, so who to choose? Hokage-sama, the results are in, a voice from the door called. Minato looked up and saw his secretary holding a folder. The exam results were here which meant it was time for the council to assemble. Naruto. The blonde Fernandez walked through the streets of the village heading to the ramen stand to get a bite to eat before going home for the day. As he made his way, he couldn't help but feel that the exam had been a bit too easy, first was the written, 
than a taijutsu spar where he had to last a whole 90 seconds with either of the chunin teachers, then came the ninjutsu part, they had to do the three basic ninja arts which were the transformation jutsu, the substitution jutsu, and the clone jutsu and also a jutsu outside of the academy 3 for extra credit. The clan heirs had shown one of their clan jutsus for the extra credit. Kiyomi of course had shown the Rasengan to the shock of the Chunins and most of the students, while he on the other hand had shown his ice make magic. Naruto was just about to enter the small ramen stand, when he felt that he was being followed by someone, from the corner of his eyes, he glanced around looking for whoever it was. It didn't take long to locate whoever was following him, it right there behind an electrical pole, hiding in the alley. He could tell right away that it was a girl, though he couldn't make out who it was, so he decided to allow her to wait while he ate then he would lead her to a training field where he would confront her. After eating two bowls of ramen, Naruto made his way toward the training field he always used to train, while at the same time keeping an eye of his stalker. He was not disappointed when he was her hiding as she followed him, though he had to admit that she was rather good at hiding, better than most of his goddamn fangirls who would not be so discreet. It didn't take long to arrive at the training field, but as soon as he did he just waited for a moment before he confronted his stalker. Alright why don't you come out of your hiding place and show yourself, the blonde called out. Naruto heard an, eep, sound come from behind one of the trees signaling that he was on to the person who was following. It took a few seconds, but eventually the person came out of hiding, she was around 4 feet tall, had long brown hair that reached her waist. Though the most noticeable feature were her eyes, they were a lavender-like color. Only one clan in the village had those kind of eyes. What do you want Hayuga? Naruto asked as he narrowed his eyes at her. Why Hayuga was following him, he didn't know, but he wanted to find out, as he knew that, that clan had been trying to get him to show why they were able to see his chakra points preventing them from using their gentle fist techniques against him. I was curious as to why the clan has been persistent to get you to become part of the clan, she said to the blonde with a frown. What do you mean? Naruto asked as he narrowed his eyes. Tisk. I overheard the elders talking to my father to approach the Yandaimi with an alliance proposal to have you marry my elder sister, the girl responded. Naruto clenched his fist at the thought of the fucking Yandaimi actually signing the contract, knowing him, he would as he was good friends with. You aren't Hinata's younger sister by any chance are you? Asked the blonde. I am, my name is Hanabi Hayuga, the girl said. Great, just what I fucking needed now. The bastard most likely will sign the contract as that bastard is good friends Hiyashi, thought Naruto. Thanks for the heads up, he told Hanabi, as he began to leave. Though, he didn't get far as he was forced to dodge when his danger senses went off. As soon as he jumped to the side he saw that it Hanabi who had attacked him. Is there a reason as to why you attacked me? He asked. I heard that you block out the Byakugan and infuriates me that someone can render our most powerful weapon useless and now the clan wants to make you part of it, because of that, Hanabi stated. So, so, if people find out then our enemies will try to gain that knowledge and we'll be weakened, the girl shouted. I find it stupid that all you do is relying of your eyes rather than to expand you skilled to other branches, Naruto stated, now then if it's a fight you want then come at me. With that last statement the girl shot towards the blonde, throwing a fury of palm thrust trying to hit him to show that he wasn't some unbeatable person. Naruto on the other hand was just dodging the attack from the smaller girl. This went on for hours, by the time it was late afternoon, Naruto was standing over the fallen form of Hanabi as she was trying to catch her breath after attacking the blonde for hours. The blonde had an amused smile on his face as he saw the girl glare at him. Lifting his hand up he conjured a ball of water from the atmosphere and dropped it on Hanabi's face drenching her. What the hell you blonde bastard, she shouted getting to her feet. Well finally up eh, he said. The blonde had the same smile on his face, he had to admit he hadn't had this much fun in a long time, far too long to remember. Sighing, he made a gesture with his fingers and two chairs made of rock rose from the ground. Naruto took a seat and waited for the girl to seat down as well. I will admit that this has been the most fun I have had in a long time, though while you were attacking I got to see your fighting style and to tell you the truth it sucks, relying on your eyes too much is a bad thing you know, he said. Hayuga only need the Bayakugan to take any opponent down, Hanabi said. Really now? Then tell me how you would fight a member of the Kagaya clan? Asked Naruto. Kagaya clan? The girl questioned, what's so special about them? 
Can't be that strong if I haven't heard of them. Wrong. The Kagaya clan is an almost extinct clan from Kirigakir no Sato, Naruto said, and let me tell you they are one of the most formidable opponent I have ever had. Naruto stood from his chair as his coat and shirt started to glow before they disappeared from view leaving his torso naked. Hanabi blushed at the sight of the shirtless Naruto before her eye landed on a scar in the center of his chest, then she saw him turn around. He hand shot to cover her mouth as she saw the same scar in the place on his back, that meant the attack that injured him went through his body. This is the scar I got from a member of the Kagaya clan, they have a special keke jenke that allows them to harden their bone to be stronger than steel, and also they can use their bones as weapons, Naruto said, know why I asked you that now, back then I only relied on one type of magic and that was the biggest mistake ever, my toki no aku was rendered useless, I had thought that with it I wouldn't need anything else, boy was I wrong. Naruto's body began to glow again as his shirt and coat reappeared. The look on the girl's face said it all she was contemplating whether to believe him or not, all her life she had been told that the Baikugan was the strongest bloodline, but now she finds out that it might not be. The tradition of only learning the gentle fist was actually weakling them, she glanced up at the person who had begun to open her eyes, she heard that he had strange ninjutsu that no one was able to copy. Maybe, can you teach me, she whispered. What? Naruto asked not able to hear her. Can you teach me how to get stronger? she asked with pleading eyes. I don't know, I just graduated from the academy, and I will sometimes be gone from the village, though guess I could teach you on my time off, Naruto said, though what I teach you, you must swear to never teach it to anyone. I understand, Shisho, Hanabi said. Naruto smiled at her, maybe having returned to the village wasn't that bad if he now had a new friend. Even though she never said anything, her actions spoke big time. She was suffering from the fact that her father was paying more attention to Hinata than he did to her, though she wasn't neglected as he had been. The blonde was about to say something when he felt an ominous presence coming in his direction. Turning his eyes away from the girl towards the line of tree, he focused on who was coming in his direction. Hanabi seeing this turned her attention to the same place, but unlike her sensei she activated her Baikugan to see what he was searching for. There a man with white hair coming this way. He seems to be carrying a large scroll on his back along with two giant shuriken, the brown-haired girl said. That sound awfully like Mizuki sensei, Naruto said. And just like that the white-haired academy teacher emerged onto their training field stopping at the sight of them. Naruto saw he had a dark look on his face as he glanced at Hanabi, then a smirk when he glanced at the blonde. The blonde though took one look at the scroll on his back and instantly knew which one it was. How he got it was another matter. The forbidden scroll was supposed to be locked away in the Hokage's library. Well, what do you know, here I was on my way to meet my master and I stumble upon a gold mine, an unmarked Hayuga and the Hokage's son, Kuma will pay a great price for the both of you, Mizuki said as he reached for one of the giant shuriken on his back. So the shouting I heard must have been from the guards who discovered that the forbidden scroll was missing, and also that you are a traitor, Naruto said. Smart one aren't you? Still it makes no difference I will kill you here and now and then take the little Hayuga and sell her to Kumo, I'm sure I can get a good price for her, the trader said as he threw the shuriken towards Naruto. Hanabi watched as the weapon neared the blonde and was about to scream, when the star suddenly evaporated in midair. Mizuki was shocked and took a step back there was no way that an academy graduate would be able to stop one of his weapons. That won't work on me, Naruto said, Hanabi get back while I handle him. The girl nodded as she backed away to hide behind a tree while at the same time wanting to see what the blonde was about to do. Mizuki pulled his second shuriken and ran towards the blonde with the intention of cutting him in two with the bladed star. As he neared Naruto summoned his crystal ball which instantly began to float in the air. Once his traitor of a sensei was almost upon him, the ball fired forward ramming him in the stomach, in the process the man was sent flying back. Little bastard, the white-haired man as he coughed up some blood, I was only planning of beating the shit out of you and take you to Kumo, but now I will truly kill you. Really now, we'll see about that, Naruto said as the crystal ball floated next to his head, Toki no Aku, Heka Seka. The orb instantly multiplied all around Mizuki, who was looking at them with a look of horror, he tried to find a way out, but it seemed that the blonde was not going to allow it. This ends here, Mizuki, the blonde mage said, Toki no Aku, Farashu Fawato.
The orbs shot straight at the ninja who tried to evade, however that proved to be near impossible as the orbs just home into his location. Hanabi watched from her place as the balls struck Mizuki in multiple places, and had to cover her ears at the screams of pain the man was letting out. When the attack ended, the traitor was left on the ground, alive, though his body was broken in multiple places at the way his limbs were and said anything. The girl couldn't help, but admire the power he had and didn't regret the fact that she asked him to be her master. However she did wonder why her sister hated the man so much. Well that takes care of the trash, he said while at that time he felt the presences of multiple shinobi coming his way. It didn't even take five minutes before a team of Anbu landed in front of him. None said anything only glanced at the broken form of Mizuku. Two of them picked up the man while the other went and retrieved that forbidden scroll that had been sent flying during the attack by the blonde. Namikaze-sama we thank you for your help, the one in a cat mask said. How many fucking time do I have to say it, that isn't my fucking name, he responded with a glared at the female Anbu. Forgive me, but as the son of the Yandaimi I must call you as such, she said a little take back from the glare. Whatever, I'm out of here, Naruto said walking away as the Anbu left as well. Well Hanabi I will see you tomorrow at this time here. The girl nodded as she watched her soon to be teacher walk away, she couldn't wait for him to teach him. A week had passed since Naruto had taken the young Hayuga Hanabi as a student. So far the training had mostly involved physical training. It wasn't until yesterday that he had used his lacrima to see what type of affinity she had, he was a little surprised when the results showed that she had a bigger affinity to water and lighting. So now it wouldn't be long until he began teaching her the basics. But at the moment he had an even bigger issue to handle, team placements. Today was finally the day that he would be placed in a three-man cell team along with a sensei. Knowing this, he also knew that the Hokage would do everything in his power to place him in the same team as his so-called sister. Hell, he was even positive that the bastard would put either Kashina or Kakashi as their sensei to keep a close eye on him. As the thought went through his mind, he glanced down at his wrist, where a rune was located, he still remembered the day that Jelal and Ultir placed it on him. The rune acted as a type of restraint to keep his magic in more control. It had been placed on him after his magic went a little wild, knowing 13 types of magic had a drawback. Though it was a good thing knowing multiple types of magic as he could one day be fighting someone who could have an advantage over his main magic and by knowing more magic he had a higher chance of surviving. Now here he sat in the academy room, waiting for Uruka to make his entrance and begin assigning the teams. As he glanced around he could hear many students talking about how they would become super cool ninjas and that how they would be going on missions to rescue princesses. He scoffed at the naivety of such comments. Glancing he could see Choji and Shikamaru talking, that was a surprise as the lazy Nara would rather be sleeping at any chance he got, though the Akamichi was doing what he does best, eat. Kiba was talking to his puppy about how he was gonna be an awesome ninja and was going to make a lot of bitches want to be in his pack. The Uchiha was silent as always sitting by the window and he would sometimes glance his way, same could be said for Hinata, though she was sitting further up and was glaring at him. According to little Hanabi, Hinata was making plans on how to get rid of him so she could have Kiyomi all to herself. Just then the sound of an approaching stampede could be heard and the vibrations felt. The door to the classroom was then slammed open and two girls appeared on the doorway fighting about who reached the room first. The only thing Naruto did was shake his head muttering something about stupid fangirls and the two who had just arrived are the biggest of them. Letting out a sigh he glanced out the window, when he suddenly felt a shiver run down his spine that made him look around him. No one was near that he could see, and then he felt a pair of arms wrap around his neck a soft pair of mounds press against his back. From the corner of his right eye he saw a curtain of red hair and instantly knew who it was, though before he could say anything he felt a soft pair of lips press on his cheek dangerously close to his mouth. Oheo, Oni-chan, said Kiyomi as she took the seat next to him and wrapping her arms around his. How the hell did she sneak up on me, again, thought the blonde mage. Somehow she had found a way to sneak up on him and do this kind of thing. He just hoped that she wouldn't stumbled upon him training Hanabi. Now though, there was no way she was going to let him go and he would just have to bear with it for a little while. It was at this time that Uruka walked into the room holding a clipboard in his hands, he was looking at everyone in the room with a proud smile on his face. 
Well, the time is here, as of today you are all proud shinobi of Konohagakir no Sato, and I am glad to have your sensei, Maruka said with a big smile on his face. Now I will begin calling out the teams, team 1. While Uruka was calling out the teams, Naruto on the other hand was fighting a big dilemma. His twin sister had gotten a bit bolder with him, and was now moving closer to him and had his arm pinned between her breasts. In his mind he was thinking about what could be wrong with her as she was never this forward, and his other head, well, that was another story. He tried to break away from her grip without causing a scene, but apparently, Kiyomi had other plans as she tightened her grip. A slight almost unnoticeable smirk began to form on her face as she saw the nervous look on her brother's face. She had been planning on doing this for a few days now, if she wanted him to notice her, then she would have to be extremely bold to get him. How she came to this decision, well she had sat down with her mother and told her how she truly felt about her brother. Her mother of course had been shocked. Though, instead of reprimanding her, she gave her daughter her full support to seek a romantic relationship with him as they hadn't really been raised together as true siblings. Kiyomi had been truly surprised at her mother's blessing. Then she had been told that in the Uzumaki clan incest was not looked down upon as long as it was between people of the same age, no child and parent were allowed to have that type of relationship. Team 7, Inazuka Kiba, Aburame Shino, and Haruno Sakura, called out Aruka getting a loud, nope, from the pink hair girl. Your sensei is, Yuhi Kuranai. Team 8, Akamichi Choji, Narashikamaru, and Yamanaka Ino, called out Aruka. No, cried out the blonde Yamanaka heiress, I, stuck with the fatso and the lazy bastard. Your sensei is Serutobi Asuma, finished the scarred chunin. Naruto felt a chill go down his spine when he noticed something, by looking around the room he saw that there were only four of them left. The blonde saw that it was him, Kiyomi, Sasuke, and Hinata left, but that couldn't be right from what he knew all teams had three and there had never been a two-man or four-man team so that couldn't be right, right? Team 9 is still in circulation, so team 10 will be Uchiha Sasuke, Hayuga Hinata, Namikaze Kiyomi, and Fernandez Naruto, Uruka called out. Woohoo! shouted Kiyomi as she grabbed Naruto's head and hugged him into her bosom, while he was still in a state of shock. He should have known that the bastard would do something like this but he just wasn't truly expecting for him to do something like this. Not only was he in the same team as his twin who was infatuated with him for some crazy reason, he was also in the same team as the duck bud emo, and the yandere hayuga. While Naruto was thinking on how he was going to survive his team, his soon-to-be new teammates were thinking other things. Sasuke didn't show it, but on the inside he's smirking, now he would be able to attract Kiyomi with awesome ninja skills and that he would show that bastard twin of hers who was truly in charge around here. Hinata on the other hand was coming up with many plans on how she would get rid of Naruto during missions while making it look like an accident. Then she would comfort Kiyomi, and she would use that moment of weakness to get what she wants. Just thinking about it gave her a slight nosebleed that went unnoticed by everyone. Kiyomi, well let's just say she was thinking on many scenarios in which she and Naruto got lost together. According to Hokage-sama, since this team has four members instead of three, it was decided that it would have two senseis, Hitaki Kakashi and Uruka said, Naruto could feel his stomach muscles tighten in his mind he was positive on who the other sensei was, Namikaze Kashina. Shit had just hit the fan, the bastard had done it, and he'd placed him in a team with some of the people he hated the most. First was the Uchiha who thought he owned everything and was to be given everything he wanted after what had happened to his clan. The Hayuga Yandere, who wanted him dead while at the same time wanted to claim Kiyomi. Kakashi his only remaining student, he was placed as sensei to keep an eye on Kiyomi and him. And last was Kashina who for the last couple of years had been trying to make him warm up to her and see her as a mother once again. All in all he was positive that the bastard was placing him on this team for one reason only, to forge a bond with them so he would become loyal to Konoha. Your new senseis will be here after lunch to pick you up, Uruka said before he walked out of the classroom. Instantly everyone started to get up and head out of the room in search of lunch, some gather their new teammates before heading out. Kiyomi stood up letting Naruto go for the first time since she arrived. Oni-chan, why don't we go and get some ramen together? She asked as she grabbed his arm. This time though as soon as she touched him, Naruto shattered into ice. 
Everyone who was left in the room fell to their knees as a powerful key washed over them. Those who were able to looked at the source who was the daughter of the Hokage whose hair was waving around as if it were alive the reason was the pile of ice that was in her twin's chair. Hinata who had been walking towards her to try and eat lunch together, was on her knees with a red hue on her face. Her lower regions were growing damp as she felt her crush's power. Naruto, screamed Kiyomi with a slight demonic tone in her voice. Naruto who was sitting on the roof of the academy felt a wave of dread hit him. The last time he felt something like this was when Ultir and Meridi had caught him and Jellal spying on them in the hot springs of Yugakir no Sato. Just as he was about to start to eat his lunch his sense kicked in and he jumped out of the way just as a fist made contact with the roof. Naruto brought his hands together ready for whoever had tried to get the drop on him. When the dust that had gathered cleared, his eyes narrowed as he saw a familiar shade of blonde hair. With a fist on the roof on one knee was none other than Senju Tsunade herself. The hell do you want now Senju? The blonde asked with an irritated tone in his voice. You told Sensei not allow me to take you on as an apprentice didn't you? She growled out. Naruto just stared at her. Why would she be pissed at the fact that he didn't want to be apprentice under her? Why the hell would I want to be under the apprenticeship of a woman who despises me? He retorted. Shit, this is just my luck. Why did she have to come and bitch about me not wanting her as a teacher? Thought Naruto, her super strength is capable of breaking my Aisu Maiku and my Toki no Aku is pretty much useless. To show you how to appreciate your family, answer the angry Senju. And I said it once and I'll say it again they aren't my family, my true family, began Naruto only to be cut off by having to avoid an incoming fist from Tsunade. That's it, Naruto thought as his body began to glow in a golden light, Tentai Maho. Misha. Just as Naruto was about to shoot towards Tsunade chains burst from the ground wrapping around them restraining both. Though, on Naruto the golden light die off glancing to his side he saw Kashina and Kakashi looking at them. The red head had the chains coming out of her back. Tsunade what is going on? The red head asked. Nothing Kashina, Tsunade responded, just wanted to ask Naruto a thing. I see, she said. Well if you ask what you wanted then why don't you head back to the hospital? The chains around both blondes disappeared and Tsunade just huffed and left, but not without first sending Naruto a deep glare. The blonde on the other hand just stared at the red head. She had gotten too freaking annoying as of late. Ever since the incident that she forced him to spend a day with his birth family, he had held even more anger towards her. Especially her goddamn chains, apparently since they were connected to her, his Toki no Aku became useless and she managed to subdue him. And now every time she wanted him to be with them, she would find him and try to restrain him using her chains, though that became tougher now that he learned to evade them by sensing the chakra around him. Sochi-kun, I think you should head back to the classroom, it's almost time for teams to be picked up, Kashina said. Naruto began to walk heading to the door, but just as he was about to walk through, he turned his head and glared at Kashina. I told you to quit calling me that, Naruto said coldly before he went through the door. Kakashi had watched the exchange and felt for Kashina, he just couldn't help and wonder how someone could hold so much anger towards the person that gave birth to him. He at first had only wanted to teach the blonde so he could try and get him to forgive his family, but Naruto was so adamant in not even giving them a chance. He of course knew of the few times Naruto had been over at his sensei's house for dinner, but even then Kashina had to drag him there and he only ever stayed long enough and ate the minimal amount of food. Kashina nay, Kakashi began but stopped when he a couple of tears on the redhead's cheeks. Why won't he forgive us, she began, Kakashi-kun, do you ever think that Naruto-kun will forgive us and he will come back to us? Nay san, I think that he will see the error that he is committing in holding so much anger towards you and sensei one day, Kakashi said, he wasn't even sure if he was right. For all he knew Naruto could go rogue if he so wanted, although he found out something today. And what is that? Did you not see that golden light that surround his body? It looks like he's finally showing us more of his techniques, the silver hair Jonan said. You're right, I wonder what that was? Kashina asked, with Naruto. Shit, how could have been so fucking stupid? Naruto said to himself as he made his way back to the room, now they will try and find out what I using. Naruto walked back into the room and head to his seat at the back of the room. Thankfully the room was only occupied by the lazy Nara who seemed to be asleep. As he sat down he thought on how he was gonna make it until Jellal returned, 
as more time passed he had been forced to reveal many techniques. First he had shown his Aku no Toki and Aisu Maiku the most. His runes were only used to protect his apartment and training area, though he knew that there was a flaw somewhere as Kiyomi kept getting past them. As he let out a heavy sigh he glanced out the window toward the training field where his thought projection was currently teaching Hanabi. Since he was busy with the academy and soon will be busy with missions if they could be called that, he decided he would use a thought projection. Using that he could send a clone of himself to train Hanabi while he would keep doing what he had been doing. The only drawback of the technique was that he had to keep using magic to keep it solid, meaning that he was only using half of his full strength. After another sigh he heard the bell go off, sometimes only having half an hour to eat wasn't long enough. He glanced to his right only to meet a pair of angry violet eyes. And just where were you? asked a pissed off Kiyomi. Eating, responded Naruto. Really, said Kiyomi narrowing her eyes, and just like karma seemed to hate him, Naruto's stomach decided to growl at that time. Well you must have not eaten enough, you're lucky that I packed a bit too much this morning then. With a smile, she pulled out a bento, but before she could give it to him she heard a familiar voice. Teen 11, to the roof, called out her mother. And just like that Naruto was off his chair and out the door before Kiyomi could react. Of course seeing that her twin had ran away again made her grit her teeth and ran after him. Hinata and Sasuke just followed at a more sedate pace. In Sasuke's case that is as Hinata walked faster to catch up to her object of affection. Meanwhile on the roof, Naruto was having a stare off against the other so-called teacher, the one-eyed Cyclops, Hitaki Kakashi. The man was leaning against the rail reading his favorite orange cover book. It wasn't a long wait before the door opened and an angry redhead walked in, followed by the Yandere Hayuga and a few seconds later, the duck hair Uchiha. And in a swirl of leaves the older redhead arrived. Good, you're all here, she said taking standing next to Kakashi who had put his book away in order to prevent Kashina from burning it like the others. Now as you know this is the first time a team of four has been made and as such Yandaimi-sama has decided to appoint the two of us as your senseis, Kakashi began explaining, now that I know that you may know each other, we would still like for you to introduce yourselves. Just basic stuff like, name, likes and dislikes, and dreams for the future, Kashina said before any of the genin could ask anything, Hinata-chan why don't you go first? The Hayuga nodded, I'm Hayuga Hinata, I like cinnamon buns, pressing flowers, my clan, Kiyomi-chan, said this with a blush, I dislike idiots, the cage bird seal, and Naruto Teme. my dream for the future is to become the Hayuga clan head and marry my true love, she said this while looking at Kiyomi from the corner of her eye. Kiyomi for some reason felt shivers go down her spine as she listened to Hinata and slowly began inching away from her. Naruto eyebrow was just twitching in annoyance, the girl had problems, but one thing caught his attention, she liked her family yet she disliked her younger sister from what he learned from Hanabi. Good, Kakashi said with a single thought, Yandere much. Sasuke, I'm Uchiha Sasuke, I have no like and few dislikes, what I have is not a dream, but an ambition, to restore the Uchiha clan to its original greatness, no matter what, the emo said with a scowl. Masumi-chan, Kashina said, I'm Namikaze Kiyomi, I like my family, especially Onisama, Ramen, my friends, learning new jutsus, spending time with Onisama, I dislike arrogant fools, looks at the emo, perverts, my dream for the future is to be the first female Hokage and marry my special one, Kiyomi said with a giant smile. Whoever this special person is must be eliminated, thought Hinata. Imo Uto, only you, Kakashi thought with a sweat drop. I will get you one way or another and this special person will die at my hands along with that fool of your brother, said the emo in his mind. This girl is starting to scare the shit out of me, Naruto said moving away. Though as he was moving away from them he noticed that he was the last one left aside for the two fools that were his teachers, with a sigh he began. I'm Fernandez Naruto son of Fernandez Jelal and Milkovich Altier. I like the time I spend with my family in Meridi. I like learning new techniques. Sarutobi Gigi. I dislike foolish people. Those who abandon others for no good reasons, and I fucking hate ramen. My dream for the future is to join my father and help him accomplish his goal and raise a family with the one I love. Hearing that her own son considered another woman his mother instead of her, made Kashina grit her teeth. She knew that his hatred for them was deep but until now she hadn't known how deep. 
Kiyomi on the other hand wondered who this Meridi girl was as it was the first time she heard him speak the name. Well whoever it was, it was her obstacle for her twin's affection. Well then, I'm Hitaki Kakashi. I like lots of things and dislike a lot of things. My dreams for the future? Well I don't feel like telling you, said the silver-haired Jonin. I'm Namikaze Kashina. I love my family and cooking. I dislike the actions that I have done in the past. My dream is to make you into proud leaf shinobi and to bring my family back together, the redhead said with a sad smile while looking at Naruto. Okay then now that's out of the way it's time for us to tell you about the real genin test, Kakashi grinned. Oh crap I forgot about that. Kiyomi yelled out clutching her head. Given how her dad had told her about how there was a real test after a genin graduated and if they failed they were sent back. She had been so focused on getting the attention of her twin that it slipped her mind. And now she was very worried about how it was her mother and big brother giving the test to them. What test? Sasuke asked. Basically the test you did was just to see if you could become genin to see if you're truly ready to be genin you had to pass the test of your genin instructor. If you fail, well you get sent back here for another year. Some have quit after the test and others are used as non-combat ninjas like courier or working in administration or something else like that since not all ninjas are used in combat after all, Kashina explained. So then I want you all to go to training area 7 be there at 5 am and I don't want you three to eat since you'll most likely throw up anyway. Kakashi smirked before be disappeared in a puff of smoke. Well Kiyomi see you at home dear, Kashina said then she turned to her son. Naruto-kun I hope that you will join us for dinner to celebrate your graduation. Naruto glanced at her before he turned and left leaving a sad Kashina behind. He was not in the mood to deal with her. Kashina let out a sad sigh out as she knew that he wouldn't be coming, but she would still make enough just in case. Kiyomi balled her hand into a fist. She had wanted to say something, but like her mother she didn't want to isolate her brother anymore, then again they would be having ramen to celebrate. She had already known of her brother's hatred for ramen, he hated everything that they liked. Later that night Naruto sat on the edge of the apartment building looking at the moon, his lacrima floating around him. He was thinking on how things were gonna go the next day. Hearing his stomach let out a growl made him sigh, he should go and get some dinner. Just as he was getting up his senses picked up a presence behind him. Turning around a smile appear on his face as he saw his surrogate grandfather standing there holding a box of takeout. Sarutobi went and sat next to the young blonde and handed him a plate of curry from the box. It's a beautiful night, the old man began. Indeed, it is, Naruto responded. So are you ready for the real test tomorrow? I'm as ready as I'll ever be, the blonde said, though I'm sure that I will have to use some of my other styles as, my Toki no Aku is useless against Kashina's chains and Hitaki can break through my Aisu Maiku. Indeed, I was shocked from when you told me that Kashina can negate you Toki no Aku, and also suppress your magic with her chains, Sarutobi said as he stood up, but I know that you will do good, just try and not to let your anger get in the way and do something that you will regret. I'll try, Naruto said. That's all for now if you enjoy it then please like share and do comments.